the season starts out a blank canvas on which any destiny could be drawn, like hopes dashed or lifelong memories born. The Clemson Tigers, defending champs, unbeaten. In the end zone, touchdown! But unsteady in spots, with a lot to lose if they lose. We got to be locked in and we got to play well. Anything can happen on a Saturday. That's why you put the ball down and play. NC State, dangerous with nothing to lose. The Wolf Pack as underdogs, with something to prove. As the wind shifts towards season's end, remember, anything can happen to any team, anywhere, at any time, including prime time. The Clash of the Carolinas on Saturday Night Football. Welcome back to Rally. You're watching a presentation of the ACC on ESPN. The Wolfpack have made their entrance in front of this big crowd. First time starters, fresh faces all over the field, but they sound fired up against the winners of 24 consecutive games. The Clemson Tigers, Dabo Sweeney with Maria Taylor. Maria. All right, thanks, Chris. Coach, you told your team to go put on their orange britches because an Atlantic Division title's on the line. What'd you notice about their energy in the locker room? Oh, they're excited. You know, they're excited. Just kind of worked out. I told the equipment guy to pack them just in case. So. Uh, this is every game for us is playoff football. This is championship phase. This is best of one. And uh, tonight you got an opportunity to punch a ticket to Charlotte for a fifth time in a row, which would be uh, which would be history for us. So we're excited about it. You mentioned playoff football. The conversation all week was about the playoff and you guys being ranked right outside of it. But you said this team is focused. What do you want them to be focused on tonight? Just play Clemson football. Just play with excellence in everything we do. We'll be fine. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. And Dabo says they have the hardest schedule in the country because they got to play Clemson every week. They got to meet their own standard. And if they don't, he feels they are judged by a different standard than other people. NC State won the toss but deferred, so they'll give Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne and company the football first. Trenton Gill set to kick it away. And Joseph Ngana. Talented rangy freshman from California back deep for the Tigers. And it is returnable from the four. And got it. Tries to get a crease, but it's good coverage for the Wolfpack. Knocked down at the 15 yard line. So Trevor Lawrence comes out. 20 touchdowns eight interceptions he's been criticized a little bit didn't play well last time they were in these parts against Carolina but got the what W I like that second line 20 and 0 as a starting quarterback I think that says it all about him this team and what this team has been about since he's taken over as a starting quarterback to me it just gets better and better every week with the more experience people forget I mean he's still a young guy as far as his maturity and growth the mental side of this game they fake it to ETN. Lawrence on the roll and fires across his body. Catch made by T. Higgins. He's near the marker. It's tough to pick the Chick fil A impact players in this comes on offense. Oh, there's, there's, so go here. there's so many of them. I'm going to start with Travis ETN. I, I like that they call him the engine. He really gets this offensive rhythm going. T. Higgins leads the group on the outside. True freshman, Drake Thomas, 32. Keep an eye on him, making his first start. Nick McLeod is back from week one. He went down with an injury. Good to see him back in the lineup. They are desperately thin at corner. ETN is averaging nine yards a carry. Test the middle. Really hard to overstate the injury situation here. No other team in the country has been hit by the injury bug like the Wolfpack. Now you lose 11 starters. You lose your top four corners. Um, I mean, you're, think about that. You're, you're moving safeties to corner. You're playing your fifth and sixth corner. I mean, there, there are very few teams. Dave Dorn told me on the field before the game that this year they've had more injuries than the previous six years combined. I believe it. Play action, quick throw across the middle, and the catch is made by Higgins. It's a first down. You got three linebackers making their first career start. All freshmen. Think yeah, about that. Absolutely. <laughs> watch the ball fake and then watch the linebackers kind of get sucked in right here. Right here. He's feeling that and feeling that. That's why he pulls the ball out. Quick throw right between those two backers. Nice in rhythm throw to Higgins for a big game. Can you imagine your first college <laughs> oh, man. offense? Come on. 
ETN right side, flips a tackle, and is brought down across the 47 by James Smith-Williams, one of the few veterans in this group. Yeah, Tony Elliott coming out early, just trying to give Dave Dorn, who's a defensive mastermind, the head coach from NC State, giving him a lot of different looks, different formations, personnel groupings, trying to make those young linebackers in this defense have to see some things and have to adjust here on this first drive. Also, see how they line up in case they have a few different wrinkles. Lawrence still got it, steps up and delivers a long throw. The catch made on the sidelines by Justin Ross. What a throw. Ball to 33. Yeah, great throw and a great read. He just reads a flat defender. Well, that's a, he had it both ways, at the top and also at the bottom. He could have gone to T. Higgins. That gives you an indication of the arm strength from the right hash, a deep outcut to the left hash. And that's the difference, I think, when you can put Higgins and Ross in the lineup together. It's the vertical downfield passing game with that length. ETN takes the pitch, has some blockers, and his jaw tripped up. Touchdown was saved there by one of those first-time starters, Drake Thomas. Watch Justin Watch Justin Ross here. This is the way you earn a lot of stripes as a receiver when you go into film and you study. He's not just a wide receiver. Boom! Puts a defensive back on his back. And then you also have a nice tight end by J.C. Ch a nice block by the tight end J.C. Chalk. But, man, Justin Ross not just out here making receptions, knocking guys on, on their back. Second and two. Ross again flips a tackle. And he'll be knocked out with a first down at the 13. Lawrence starts four for four. Well, this is textbook for, for this offense. A few runs, a few passes, two different formations. Right now, this young NC State, their heads are spinning. They, they looked all week in, on film, and they try to get some tendencies. Right now, this thing's coming at them so fast, and there's no how to look with these a variety of formations. Seven plays, three runs, and four passes. Well, Pack trying to show some pressure on first down. It took the first read away from Lawrence, but look at the strength. The 20 pounds of added muscle. He's been running the ball effectively this year. Yeah, I think he thought he had Justin Ross because of the soft cushion at the top. And the defensive back kind of adjusted as he was about to make the throw. So he, that shows some of his maturity. Maybe early in the year he tries to force it, tries to make a play with his arm. This time he holds on to it. And he's able to pick up positive yardage, six yards there. Second and four play. Keeper, can he get the edge? Bangs into the end zone, and the Tigers take it right down the field to draw first blood. Chris, that's the difference, I think, with Trevor Lawrence this year and last year. It's like T. Higgins is down. He, he's reading right here. This is the zone read game, and this is where his legs have become much more of a factor. He's deciding he's collapsing down, and that means he's going to keep it and go around the edge. Trevor Lawrence, his feet this year, 50 carries, 262 yards, and now his seventh rushing touchdown on the year. You said it, balance, whatever they were calling, was working, and that was pretty much to be expected against this young defense. As you said, head spinning, and there's the progressive pylon. Can you see the block? Ooh, he yeah, got that's, that's what I was gonna back. Say. It, it looks like, you know, you know, T. Higgins, they have a lot of trainers and doctors down there with him. It looks like one of the defenders rolled up into him, maybe Peyton Wilson, 11, as he was being blocked. And Lawrence got into the end zone. It looked like 11 actually rolled up into the back of, of T. Higgins. Higgins, the junior receiver, has got 18 career touchdowns, a key part of this offense. And Another look. A, yeah, there's 11 being, being blocked and... Anytime somebody comes in and hits the, 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 the lower part of that knee ankle area, you're always concerned. It's great to see him up walking off the field. Such a big time playmaker for this offense, but a great drive for the Tigers. Get this thing started. Nine plays, 84 yards, took just over four minutes. That is the danger of deferring when you win the toss. Very likely you're going to take the field with your first offensive possession behind, and that's what NC State will do. Potter with the conversion. Lawrence razor sharp as Higgins goes into the trainer's tent. Relief for Tigers fans. Higgins looks to be okay out of the training tent. The target command center coverage of the game streams live on ESPN3 and the ESPN app. You can get coaches ISO shots, all the stats. Well, that's not unexpected. Well, the way that uh, Clemson went down like a hot knife through butter. 
in the opening drive. And now Devin Leary and this Wolfpack offense will try to answer against the defense. Kirk, you pointed out, is better statistically than last year's championship group. The same will fair catch. He had a fumble on a kickoff last week, and I think he's been instructed to fair catch every kickoff from now until the end of time. Devin Leary comes from the Philly area in South Jersey. He broke all kinds of records. They're Gatorade Player of the Year. Same class as Trevor Lawrence. So those guys hooked up at the Elite 11 quarterbacks. And you know, the national camp, just, you see, oh, no, Devin's got a very serious look on his face. Hey, hey, man, high school football in New Jersey is serious. And if you're the two-time Gatorade Player of the Year in that state as a quarterback, that, that says a lot about your credentials when you come in to play college football. He's kind of said he took a lot of mental reps early in the year when he was sitting behind a couple of the other quarterbacks. And last week got his first career start. Game's moving pretty quick for him, obviously, at this point in his career. Wow, running right into James Skalski, the middle linebacker, is a little tailback Jordan Houston the freshman is listed at 510 but is more like 58 and I, I love James Skowski I thought Clemson they had a great defense a year ago but th this guy plays with an edge plays with a passion and when you lose great players very fortunate to not only have his playmaking ability but you can just see in his eyes guy just has it he, he has a buzz to him and, and I think the rest of that front seven feeds off of that energy. You like the Ben Bullwear comparison, the former I think he, linebacker? I love Ben Bullwear, but I think he this kid plays with uh, even more kind of uh, edge and, and maybe a little bit more speed. The try a bubble screen on second and 11, complete for a short game there by Emeka Amezi, the junior wide receiver, the top targeted player. Notice the injuries in those corners. Ingram, Palmer, Smith, all lost for the year. Their top two tight ends are out. C.J. Riley would have been a part of this receiving core. And Isaiah Moore and Asius are both out tonight with concussions they suffered last week. They'll be back in the next game, but sorely missed tonight. Yeah, 11 starters. It's been just one of those years for NC State. One thing, I guess you could talk, there's the left side. Two true freshmen. Keep that in mind when you watch this game. The left side of that offensive line played high school football last year and now they're going up against Clemson the defending national champs starting left guard is out suspended Joe Sculthorpe Leary on third and long delivers a throw that's wide good coverage there on a mezzi by Kendrick and it's fourth down and this is Brent Venables he walks up linebackers and then he ends up bringing Isaiah Simmons see how he's showing linebacker pressure it's the offensive line, these young guys are setting their protections. Ball is snapped, they drop, and then Simmons ends up coming. Just constantly affecting pass protection. Communication puts a lot of stress on that offensive line and the running back in pass pro. One thing the Wolfpack do well, they punt it and kick it well. And this is Trenton Gill who's a Ray Guy Award contender, and he booms it deep. Way back, Amari Rogers slips a tackle. Flags are down as Rogers gets the edge and will bring it out near midfield and is still going near the 40 of the Wolfpack but the penalty is way back at the 15 yard line this this will come back yeah I think that's a, a push in the back against uh, against Clemson said they punt it well and yeah. he's had plenty of reps and it's the freshman 55 yard punt Rogers retreated the Kick was beyond the coverage, and he made a nice move there. Yeah. Andrew Booth, a corner. During a return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team number 23. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. Timeout. Andrew Booth hustling down, just trying to make a play against the gunner. And just uh, just underestimates the speed there, and really no need for the block, but uh, it's a learning point for a true freshman. So Lawrence and the Tigers back to work from their seven yard line up by seven. Saturday Night Football on ABC is presented by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. And in part by Pizza Hut, official pizza of college football. No one out pizzas the hut. It's the work of artist Sean Carrick. Cool feature here. The connecting the two halves of campus is a tunnel called the Free Expression Tunnel. It goes underneath the railroad tracks. And every day, it's painted differently by some student group. So Sean giving us a look at both logos. Penalty moves the ball back to the eight-yard line. And it's a keeper. And he's got all kinds of room. And Lawrence into the open field. Just slides down out near the 40. 
I, this defense is is obviously been trained this week. To, hey, this running back nine. Hey guys, we're gonna want to keep an eye on him. We got to take him out of this offense. Watch the linebackers chase him. They all think he's got the ball. There's nobody left. I'm telling you. Trevor Lawrence is a threat running the ball, and if you get so caught up on ETN, you better be ready and have somebody for him on the back end because he's going to make you pay for it. You still got the football, and now late pressure, and we'll just throw it away. That's a good, good coverage. That first drive, if you just tuned in, Trevor Lawrence and the offense really in sync. A variety of different looks. First play of the game, he kind of gets things going here. Positive yards, positive yards here. Anticipating a great throw, gets it. You see the arm strength there to Justin Ross, and then the legs to get into the end zone. And a flawless first drive for the Tigers to go up seven. Second and ten play, Lawrence rolls and fires near his side, gets made by Ross, who shows his strength. The guy who lit up the tide on the championship game will move the sticks to the 46. Yeah, I think just watching Trevor Lawrence, but so many people have critiqued him this year with the eight interceptions. And, and sure enough, Dabo would tell you he's he's had a handful of plays he'd love to have back, but what quarterback hasn't, right? Other than maybe Joe Burrow. Uh, and, and, and what he's done, I think, early is I think he felt that pressure of winning that national championship as a freshman. I think if anything subconsciously, maybe from time to time he forced a few throws trying to make a play happen. ETN breaks into the clear, another first down. Interestingly, of the eight interceptions, six have been thrown with no pressure. In other words, he's just pressing the ball downfield, trusting his receivers to make a play. And that's it. Maybe making the reckless decision from yeah. time to time. And that's part of growing. I thought Dabo made a great point with you and I this week saying, you know what, he's never had to face adversity. It's been good for him and in a strange way to have to learn how to deal with some adversity and kind of harden him and toughen him emotionally to be able to be prepared for that because you're going to face that, obviously. Adversity with a small A. Yeah. Play. Right. play action. Here's a deep shot. Loop down field and Higgins had it in his hands. Could not hold on in the end zone. Covered by Graves. That was a perfectly thrown ball soft coverage man-to-man -man against graves a safety moving over the corner and i don't think he really appreciated the arm strength there of what trevor lawrence could do i mean that is a perfect throw to t higgins who is typically very reliable in making that catch he's been perfect this year that's the first drop of the season for yeah. higgins then jay dixon spelling etn it's a high snap that Lawrence pulls down and delivers far side to Joseph Ngata. He's got about nine. Third and one coming up. Now, NC State plays a 3-3-5 stack, meaning they have eight guys at the line of scrimmage. This defense, no matter who they're playing, is built to stop the run. Tonight, early in this game, Graves, who's going down, they're playing really soft, trying to keep all this speed in front of them and trying not to give up the big play. Here's the injury to Graves. He's one of those guys who's a safety, almost 200 pounds, moved over to the corner position because of all the injuries we showed you. It is really, really a tall order to be a safety and play corner against this receiving core, to say the least. We'll take a break. Third and one for Clemson coming up. Lovey Smith and the Beard are rolling. 25-point lead blown by the Spartans. NC State takes a timeout. And you saw Graves slowly walking to the dressing room to have that injury checked out. The last thing they needed was another injury to the secondary. Well, Trevor Lawrence is kind of tired of hearing about it for fans, but this TikTok video <laughs> by a young lady in Atlanta comparing her face to his... And Maria, she went, to, she went, goes to the same high school as you went to in Atlanta, right? Yeah, she does, Chris. Uh, Centennial High School. That's what Knights do. Obviously, very creative. But Bella is actually a Clemson fan. And so you can see how closely uh, she looks just like Trevor Lawrence. And apparently people are starting to notice her when she's at her volleyball matches now because that's really taken off. Over a million views of that TikTok video. A million too many as far as Trevor's concerned. <laughs> All right, third and one off the timeout here. Dixon is still the back to the right of Lawrence. 
And they feed him the football, and he will be spun down, but it'll be a first down inside the 30. Brock Miller on the stop. Yeah, went to a different formation. They, they spread them out before the timeout by NC State with four receivers, two by two, two on one side, two on the other, came back out of the timeout. And they went with one back and two tight ends, just used the power running game to pick up that first down. Deshaun Miller, corner replacing Graves. Replacements, replacing replacements at this point. Dixon, forced wide and knocked down for a short loss there. Tanner Engel, the top tackler of the defense, the safety made the stop. Nice job, Clemson trying to run back into the boundary there. Got a little bit of penetration. Murchison, best defensive lineman that they have, 92, and just no real estate at all for the fleet-footed Dixon. Engel, another guy who's been shifted around, was a nickel. Now he's playing safety, a little bit undersized. At about 185. Second and 12. First negative play of the night for Clemson. Lawrence has time, but nobody open. And now will scramble straight ahead and knock down about uh, three yards short of the marker. Again, that, there's the difference. It's not just his own read. Dabo Sweeney challenged him to say, hey, this year, you know what I want to see? I want to see you use your feet more. If they take those passes away, take off. Take off and run. Use those feet. You're a great athlete. You're Kirk, long. Kirk, there are three, three Wolfpack defenders down on the field, keeping this athletic training staff extremely busy. This is getting surreal. Smith Williams looks okay, but number 11 there, Peyton Wilson, the freshman linebacker, making his first career start. Headed to the dressing room. It's just really been mind-boggling. He said that Dave Doran had never had this many injuries in his previous years of coaching combined. Quarterbacks have been healthy. They've just gone to three different ones, but injuries all over the place. Third and four. And Lawrence again looking to run. And a flag is down as he has hit hard short of the first down. And it was Laurel Murchison, the leader of that front. It was in the holding zone, that flag. I think they may have gotten 76, Pollard. Jeff Heiser in command of this ACC crew tonight. Offensive line, incredibly accomplished and experienced. Four seniors up there. Pollard's one of holding. them. Holding. Offense, number 76. Ten-yard penalty. Third down. Got 50 wins, each of them, in their career. Incredible group. Yeah, right in the middle of the screen. He... You know, they brought pressure. I think he felt it right there. I think he sensed that Lawrence was taking off and going, and he just grabs on to Val Martin. So the first little piece of adversity for this Tigers offense tonight, the penalty makes it third and 14. And, and when the Wolfpack do get Trevor Lawrence to a rare third down, they, they've been bringing pressure. Let's see if they disguise and bring it late. He's been very, very good against the Blitz this year. They do bring it. He gets the ball out and has Higgins wide open. Who scores? And Clemson, two for two tonight with a touchdown drive. 33 yards. That one. Well, they, he got behind the corner. Kim comes up late, doesn't reroute him, doesn't jam him at all, makes it easy to get behind the corner and in front of the safety. That nice hole right there. The progressive pylon cam shows you does a good job of staying in bounds, but the corner, Nick McLeod, who's a veteran, see to see a captain. He's been out since week one, came up late, and just couldn't get hands on him. Made it easy, as I said, for Higgins to get right behind him. 19th career touchdown for T. Higgins. And Clemson up a couple scores, 10 minutes into the game. Chilly night in Raleigh, but the blimp doesn't mind. Good you're providing our aerial coverage. Introducing the newest honorary member of the College Football Hall of Fame, the Goodyear Blimp. Goodyear, more driven. Temps will drop into the low 30s by the time this game wraps up. Framed as a sellout. And we'll pack. Actually, have underrated and pretty passionate home fans here. It's been, oh, yeah. it's been a tough year. They are 4 0 at home against much, much lesser competition, but. Uh, Think back. They, they won 14 out of the last 16 home games. Eh? Yeah. Severely tested tonight. You see in the coastal 
Virginia getting wins. Wake yeah, Forest Wake losing to Virginia Tech today. And that's why Clemson has the orange britches on to try to clench the Atlantic. They, all of a sudden, the Coastal has gotten great. How about Justin Fuente? I mean, it could not have looked any worse after the first. Greater competitive. It's, it's balanced. Well, I mean, it's great because, yeah, because it's coming down to the wire here. With all Look at the, the standings here. Could in, ultimately could end up maybe with Virginia Virginia Tech playing late to see who ends up advancing to Charlotte. Houston on a handoff. Here was Reese Davis called the Coastal Wheel of Destiny, spinning around. <laughs> yes. It's 19 straight ACC games, but notice the, the bar graph here. Look at the, how few the margin of victory are under a touchdown. Once in 17, four-point game in 18, the one-point Carolina escape, and look how many big margins of victory in those ACC games. The average by 30 points. Yeah. Wow. Their dominance over a four-year period in this conference, we'll talk about that later on, rivals any four-year period by any team in any league in the history of the sport. Think about that. Running game is going to be tough tonight. So on second and 11, now the freshman, the ball's on the ground. It's still loose, scooped up. And a touchdown by Chad Smith, though he's knocked down at the two, didn't get in, was headed for the end zone. Venable's defense with their 19th takeaway. Well, he brought both the linebackers, and I'm going to tell you, I, I think that Houston was surprised he had the ball. Watch him, the blitz comes in here, Skousky's going to get through and get to him, but I think the ball comes out. Yeah, it was never in there. Ball's loose, look at all the white jerseys looking to pounce on it. Try to get it into the end zone, but that ball was never secured by the young freshman back. I think quarterback maybe trying to pull it out, back maybe squeezing it, but a miscommunication ultimately cost or cost NC State and Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator, fired up. I thought, I think Smith thought he was going to get a touchdown, drop from behind, and so Clemson it ha hasn't mattered where they've taken over. Now they got a first and goal and ETN. Knocked down for a two-yard loss. They've driven the length of the field. It's a, a tall order for this defense to stop when they take over at the three. Uh, not to mention, you just gave up a touchdown after an 11-play drive, and your offense goes out there. They've got their work cut out for them, and then they fumble, and you're right back out of the field, and old Trevor Lawrence and the boys are sitting inside the five-yard line. But it, they're still fighting, though. Lawrence rolls, shovel pass, ETM, setter step, and spins into the end zone, and Clemson stretches the lead. A short touchdown drive after a couple of long ones. And John Thompson, the left guard who's back in the lineup right here, is going to pull around. He's just trying to draw that defender towards him, and then he'll give that shovel pass to Travis Etienne. See how he pulls that defender in, Moorhead gives it to him underneath. Thompson with a nice block. Simpson leads the way and then he's able to fall into that end zone for a touchdown. Travis is humble. He should hold on to that football because it's a career milestone for him. 52nd career touchdown. 49 of those on the ground and he surpasses the record for but CJ Spiller did it in two years and nine games. Wow. Technically, that's a touchdown reception by Etienne on the shovel pass. Still a record with his 52. And Clemson continues to crush people in the first quarter. That was almost too easy after the fumble forced by Skalski and recovered by Smith. 100, what was that, 121 to 7? Yep. Sam's going to try to return this one. He's a guy with a lot of speed. You know, Devin Larry was the third stringer to begin the season behind Matt McKay and Bailey Hockman, but he always took, you know, mental reps any behind the starter, Kirk. Yeah, I, I love that. You know, you, you've heard athletes over the years in many sports talking about getting mental reps, how it could help you. I mean, he's literally he's like standing right there about 10 or 15 yards back looking at coverage. He said that really helped him. So when he got his number called last week, you know, he at least was getting those mental reps to allow him to envision coverage and where to go with the football. See Russell Wilson, the last freshman to start at quarterback for the Wolfpack. And he gets it on the edge. This is Devin Carter, and the rangy receiver knocked out of the 40. A flag comes in late. No one Turner was in coverage. Going to have a hold there on NC State after a nice gain to tight end. Angeline downfield just trying to make a block. Holding offense number six. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. 
First down. Injuries, the self-inflicted wounds, both offensively and defensively, have been a serious problem. You get that with inexperienced players out there, but it's it's been some self-inflicted wounds that have really hurt this team throughout yeah, the and, season. And when you're playing with uh, two tr true freshmen on the left side of the offensive line and a quarterback making his second career start, you're down 21. You finally got a little bit of space to, to get an athlete out and, and pick up some positive yards. Obviously, you cannot afford to get behind the sticks. Spot foul makes it first and 12. Zonovan Knight, and I'm going to tail back, a guy who's been nursing a number of injuries, but is... Good enough to go. The freshman gets the edge, and Knight in a foot race down the sidelines. Another flag comes in way behind the play. Finally knocked out inside the 35, but it looks like this one's going to be marched back again. I think, I think they grabbed another Clemson defender, grabbed him by the jersey. Boy, they finally Holding got to the edge there. Five. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Was saying the wide receiver. Yeah, right there. Uh, a, an easy call there. And but uh, how about them getting to the edge? Xavier Thomas collapses down. You got two linemen pulling around. He gets up to the linebacker, and then right there is the hold. He tries to pull his hands out as if he did not make the hold. But another play there that sets the Wolfpack back on positive yards. Yeah, it negates a 46-yard run, which would have been by far the longest run this season by a running back. They've really struggled to make big plays from that position. It's first and five. And now Leary just lost the football, just fell out of his hands with no contact. And Tyler Davis with the second takeaway tonight. Ouch. Yeah, I mean, it, honestly, these last three plays, kind of symbolic of the year for NC State. The ball, as you said, Chris, you can't even explain it. You, you can't explain how and why the ball and some of these things happen. They just had, you know, he's not holding the laces. Maybe maybe that had something to do with it, but the ball just comes out of his hand, and the big freshman, the big fellow who's had a great first year as a, as a rookie, pounces on top of the football. But, yeah, back-to-back -back positive plays, negated by a penalty, and then the quarterback just simply drops the ball. And now you give Trevor Lawrence as if he needs it more positive <laughs> field position to start another Yeah, drive. I mean, overwhelming gap in talent coming in. But when you make mistakes like that, the, the job just begets, becomes even more impossible. ETN on the pitch. And now he throws it back on, on the ground. Lawrence picks it up, scoops it up. Is going to make something of this crazy play. I'm going to tell you that. Wow, the, what be hands. the best play was just off the slick grass fielding the ball. ETN looked like I thought he was going to throw it downfield, but instead, how about a little short hop? Incidental, but if we play that in real speed, he's more of an appreciation for what Trevor Lawrence did right there. He's got to have a little baseball, play a little infield in his background. Nice play. And instead of a, a disaster, they pick up a couple yards. I mean, that was a live ball obviously is a backwards pass and that Look, Lawrence is a freaky athlete I mean I know he's a great quarterback just an incredible athlete he, I don't think people understand that part of his game now ETN his more preferred role just barreling straight ahead and into the end zone scores standing up yeah as a passer not so much as a runner that's what you expect to see. Well, not just tonight against NC State, but the rest of the ACC slate, and then once this team gets into the playoff and possibly a national championship, you're going to have to defend this. Nine getting to that second level, building up acceleration, and there, I mean, he, he's not just a fast back. When Davo Sweeney says he's the most complete back I've ever coached, think about some of the guys he's been around. Best back I've ever coached, and he's talking about not just the vision, not just the acceleration, but also now he's got power, lower body strength to bounce off of those tackles. Well, two long touchdown drives, two short ones after takeaways, scoring in all four possessions. It's ugly early. Next Saturday night, we'll be there. McLean Stadium, unbeaten. Baylor has survived the Triple OT against Oklahoma and college game day built by the Home Depot. We'll get things beginning 8 o'clock local, 9 o'clock Eastern. Looking forward to that. Baylor with a close call. Got that was a wild third game. Third overtime. TCU and Baylor each had a fourth down touchdown pass in overtime. There was a controversial overturn of a touchdown call 
by the officials there against TCU, and Baylor, just, Baylor got a stop at the end. And they just wouldn't go away. It, they had to hit a, that last second field goal to get it to nine to yeah, nine. 51 yarder to force overtime. Yeah. And then just seemed like just when you think there's no way, whoop, they made another play. Oh, now there's no way. They make another play. So we're fired up to get to Waco next week. Yeah, three field goals in regulation, three touchdowns in overtime, and now Ted Brown's record is no more. Travis Etienne, 49 rushing touchdowns, equaling Ted Brown, a great Wolfpack player, is in the ring of honor here. For him, tearing things up in the late 70s, and he's hunting down the guys who are ahead of him. Ted Brown still holds the school record for yards rushing in a game, but it was against Penn State. Game I recall vividly in the late 70s. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay. Well, Pack, you're down by four. What do you got here? Knight off the left side. It's about six. Like I said, I don't even think Clemson knows the score of the game. Like, it, it, it's not 28 to nothing in Brent Venable's mind. It's 0 0 right now. Like, if you think, oh, okay, they're going to take it easy. No, 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 no. They are in. Championship, championship phase. phase right now. It's, in their mind, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Well, this had the feeling that the score could be what Dabo and Venables wanted it to be, and I think they want it to be big. Yeah. There's a statement about dominance, and if you don't think that we've looked quite dominant enough, we will show you tonight what dominance looks like. Final minute of the first quarter as the Wolfpack face a third and three. Trying to get Leary settled down. And the ball is batted in the air, rejected right at the line of scrimmage there by Justin Foster. Incomplete and fourth down coming up. Yeah, has great hands. Foster, the junior. You know, they lose all those defensive linemen a year ago. And what are they going to do? And it's it's been a rotation of defensive ends. Rudolph and Foster, usually from that side. Good bend, good timing, athletic play by 35 to be able to bat that ball away there on third and short. Total yards are 210 to 15. Approaching the end of the quarter. Rodgers standing back to receive the punt. Actually, there was a there was a flag. There was some confusion. The flag was thrown and then picked up. Marcamento and Mike Black spotting it up in the booth here. So that that five yard penalty. Is going to give NC State a first down, and Dabo's taking a note there. That mental mistake. Yep. Get to the bottom of that. Part, that's not part of championship phase. Yep. That's kind of the first negative note he's had a chance to take tonight. That is, he ran looks, out of clean that. That that's his, that's his fourth page of positive notes. That's his first line <laughs> of the negative notes. I'm still writing there. So given a fresh set of downs, Leary rolls out and flips it to Knight in the flat, incomplete. As arriving just as the football got there was Skowski. Well, that's a great play again by Skowski, getting out into the flat, looking to see potentially who might be a target. He feels the the back sliding out there. You see him work from the middle, just kind of waiting, waiting, and then times it up perfectly. Runs right through Knight with that acceleration and power to be able to dislodge the football. He's got the tattoo in the left bicep that says war like the warrior you are. It's also in his Instagram profile. His dad who passed away is very close to he, he credits him with instilling that kind of aggressive warrior mentality. Look at him communicating. Look, I mean, he, he's really an extension of Brent Venables out to this defense. Second and ten, Leary flushed in the pocket and spun down. Did hold on to the football, but just as Jordan Williams sacked him. And they only rushed four. They cleared the linebackers out in coverage. And I think Leary thought he had a little look. See the middle of the field? Leary's thinking about trying to get up and, and taking advantage of that. But quickness and recognition there by Jordan Williams and that defensive line to prevent him from getting up to that second level. Well, we said Clemson was ornery and angry and feeling disrespected. And they are taking it out on a shorthanded Wolfpack team. 28 zip after one. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station.
Set for quarter two, it's Saturday to football on ABC, presented by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, part of Veterans Week on ABC, presented by USAA. Third and long, Leary across the middle. Catch is made, and turning the corner for a first down is Tabari Hines, the former Demon Deacon of Wake Forest, who's transferred here. Big play in a Clemson territory. Uh, they're, they're finally able to get a player out where he can make a play. Clemson brought the blitz with Simmons, and here's an athlete against James Skalski, usually dealing with tight ends and backs. This time he's trying to play, make a play in space against a wide receiver who's able to get, uh, get to the corner and outrun him in high. Over the drive extended by the offside penalty on Clemson. Now a 22-yard gain on third and 11. Houston is just wrestled down. That is a tough, tough assignment to run inside against Clemson when you're about 180 pounds. Well, that and when you have Brent Venables blitzing linebackers and Isaiah Simmons from that nickel spot. I mean, they're, they're flying downhill against that running game. It makes it tough on the, on the offensive line to try to get up to Skalski and Smith when they're flying to take that running game away. And still moving pre-snap, giving the young quarterback a look. They bring some heat, and the pass is incomplete. Got it out quickly. Really interested to see if Kayvon Wallace can have an interception tonight because he has one pick in each of his three career games against NC State. That's incredible. Three of his five career picks have come against the Wolfpack. And a pick to seal a game against Ryan Finley in the last play of the game. A couple of tips. You cannot overstate his value to this secondary and to this defense and what he's been able to do. He does so many different things for Brent Venables and, and this defense. Has anybody ever had a pick no. against I, one opponent in four consecutive years? I, I, not that I'm aware of. Ball batted down at the line again. It was Tyler Davis. One of the new faces in that defensive line replacing all those vocal leaders and he makes another play and it's fourth down. Venables telling me yesterday, he said, you know the thing with Davis, he just came in different than a lot of the other true freshmen. A little more mature, uh, powerful, had great fundamentals. There wasn't a whole lot that he necessarily had to really pick up to give him a chance to play right away. And with his size near 300 pounds, that's why he finds himself out there playing. Comes from Apopka, Florida, rural part of the state, but a football hotbed. And Trent Gill trying to pin Clemson deep, and the fair catch made at the 13-yard line. So, first possession of the second quarter. Tigers coming up. Taco Bell continues to celebrate the student sections. The Wolfpack student section trying to show some spirit here. The my student section of the year. Be selected at the end. ESPN.com slash Taco Bell. To check out how your school is competing. Hashtag Live Mosque Student Section Contest. Tigers, 210 yards in the opening quarter. Take over. And a play action first down throw by Lawrence. Luke downfield. Jump ball and got it. Couldn't come down with it. But a late flag comes in in the secondary. Malik Dunlap and Tanner Ingle in coverage. Yeah, that's one of the things we see all the time when the ball's underthrown. And Trevor Lawrence, as soon as he threw it, kind of tapped his, his chest, almost saying that that was there is no that foul one's on me. For defensive pass interference, second down. Surprised they didn't call him. He, he comes, tries to work his way back to the underthrown ball. And anytime that defender never really does a good job of, of turning his head, watch Dunlap. He's just trying to catch up to the receiver and. Sure, really, why they said that was not pass interference. It looked like pass interference to me. I mean, he pushed him. Dave Katai in the booth is making the pass interference a, signal, mercy, backing you up. Yeah, mercy rule, uh, pick up the flag. I, I don't know. Is it mercy rule already in effect early second? Uh, second 10, they zip it across the middle, and it just flat out drops. Uncharacteristic. Higgins' second time tonight. That they're having no drops all year coming in. Yeah, and, and again, we, we saw this play earlier. Watch the linebackers, the safety. He pulls it out on the run pass option. They take the run away, no problem, make the throw, and perfectly red, and then just drop. T. Higgins maybe starting to peek his his eyes up to look where that hit might be coming. I just saw Dabble. He wrote a little note about that. That's two now. Yeah, you got two notes. notes. 
Third and ten. Four-man rush and plenty of time for Lawrence to survey the field and then take off. Can he get there? No. He'll be gang tackled short of the first down by the freshman linebacker Drake Thomas. And it's a stop. Throughout the state's defense. Yeah, Dave Doran that time, instead of blitzing like they've done many times on third down, they rushed three, drop eight. He had nowhere to go with the football, so that, that little bit of a change up, different look, and uh, the right time to call that because Trevor Lawrence back there holding the ball, holding it, holding it, had nobody open downfield. Let's give a rep to Will Spires, just his 29th punt of the season. C State would love to get the short field. The offense needs all the help they can get. Thayer Thomas is the returner. He's playing through a hamstring issue. Had one of those hamstring Offside. braces Defense, yesterday at practice. Oh, oh boy. Results of the penalties. First down. Oh, oh my goodness. I'm out of here. Are you kidding me? I can't believe this just happened. I mean, you get Trevor Lawrence off the field, and then you. You, you, said, you said, Becca, if you said, I'm out of here, you, well, no, you, you got to stay. I mean, I feel bad. Okay, I mean, all right. As in, like, what else could go wrong? I'm out of here kind of thing. Okay. Like, I can't believe this. Yeah, it's that was happening. one of those deals where he had no contact, but he came across and, and caused the punt team to flinch. I mean, the defense did their job. They, they got him off the field. And that, by the way, it was just enough to give them a first in after the five-yard mark-off. And now Dixon into the secondary. It's going to take... All the resolve well, these backups can muster on this side of the ball to not let Clemson go down and score after the latest miscue. Yeah, there have been a number of them in NC State putting the ball on the ground deep in their own territory, give the ball right back to Clemson. A couple big plays that they had, and they were negated by holding calls, bringing them back. And right after a couple bad plays, the ball mysteriously just falls out of the hands of the quarterback, once again giving... Trevor Lawrence and Clemson, great field position. Amari Rogers end around, hit hard, knocked down for a loss. That was Ingle, the safety, making a nice play. I tell you, man, it may be 28 to nothing, and every break might be going against him. But this defense, watch 10 come in here and hit you. I mean, he comes in here and blows up Amari Rogers. I mean, you gotta, you gotta appreciate the way they're playing. Watch him, he's safety, just kind of reading it. Here he comes, 10, boom, good hit. However, there is a player down for the Wolfpack defense. That's Jarius Moorhead, the starting strong safety. Already they've lost Peyton Wilson, the linebacker, for the night, which what appears to be a shoulder issue. Take a break. Saturday Night Football, presented by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's on ABC, is brought to you by Pacific Life. 150 years strong, protection and retirement solutions for your future. And Burger King, try the all-new Impossible Whopper, made from plants and now available nationwide, only at Burger King. It's a weekly ritual. They do a spectacular job on Instagram at Clemson, and this is the We Win, We Dance hashtag, and they're, they're fixing to dance again tonight. Look at these streaks here. Haven't lost in 677 days. That was a loss to Alabama in the semifinal a couple of years ago in the Superdome, which of course is this year's ultimate destination for the championship game. Second and 13. It's Dixon. Lawrence fakes it to him. Wanted to go downfield. Now just checks it down. Easy pitch and catch. And Higgins holds on to this one. It's another first down. Yeah, you know, he worked from the left all the way back to the right. The, the, the routes mirrored one another from the left. Watch his eyes. Looks over, thinking about that long outcut. Comes back, has T. Higgins running the exact same route. You see him work through those progressions. Didn't like what he looked, what he saw. Had the protection from that offensive line. Came back, made a nice throw. They hand it off inside. Dixon. Short game. They had Higgins one on one coverage in the left side if they wanted to test that matchup. You know, tonight I think Tony Elliott and Jeff Scott, the co offensive coordinators, felt that because of the style of defense that NC State plays, that they that typically you'll see this offense run to throw, to set up their throw game, their pass, uh, their play action pass game. Tonight they really felt 
these guys would load up to stop the run. They may have to throw to go back eventually to the run once they push those safeties back. Etienne and the pass, it's right down the line, knocked out of bounds. NC State's defense coming into this game, Kirk, had been run over by BC and Wake Forest. It allowed 89 points, 950 yards the last couple games. Still have not had a takeaway in five games. No interception since September 21st against Ball State. It's been a huge problem for the defense. Yeah, dead last in the entire country with only five turnovers on the year. Third and six. Trevor seeing blitz, moving, affecting the protection, moving ETN over. Grabs the snap and under pressure delivers incomplete. He was sandwiched and tried to find Rodgers, but it's another stop with this NC State defense, which is showing some grit here down four scores. Yeah, still an area that, I, again, he's growing. Everybody wants to push him to the NFL. This is where he's still growing. You know, you have a receiver here, you have a receiver coming across. And don't forget the back that's sneaking out. And then he's just kind of, he's kind of hanging in there waiting for that crossing route instead of maybe just checking it down. Check it down to the back and it picks up a first down. That's all, again, part of any quarterback's development. Ugly punt, high and off the side of the foot. Bouncing around in there, the whole bunch of flags come in where the punt was down at the 14-yard line and the scuffling going on between the special teams groups. Jeff Heaser getting busy here in the second quarter. Dabo Sweeney, I think, will just want his team, you know, to keep its focus. It is so easy. Personal file, face mask, picking team, number one, 15-yard penalty, first down. It's Darian Kendrick Timeout. on the penalty. And Maria Rogers also got an earful from Dabo there. This is this. This is what he's going to coach him hard, regardless of the score. If you're claustrophobic, don't don't buy those seats under the walkway there. Hey, Tuesday night over on ESPN, the exclusive reveal, the next CFP Top 25 rankings. Kirk will join the gang here. Rob Mullins, the chairman, will be interviewed. 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN, also on the ESPN app. One big question, we'll see if LSU's victory in Tuscaloosa propels the Tigers over Ohio State into the number one spot. Leary. Tries to throw a back shoulder fade, but it's wide intended for Mezzi. What do you think? Yeah, right? it's, I mean, that, that'll, again, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day, but it's, a, it's an interesting discussion because Ohio State won, whatever, by 60 points today. Um, and they've been the most, com my thing with them is, but I don't care who they've been playing. They've been the most consistent, most complete team offensively and defensively. But, man, it's hard to start to ignore that resume that continues to to get uh, established there by LSU and what they're doing. Knight wrapped up for a short loss. Baylor remained undefeated. The triple overtime escape. Their tests are ahead. They got Oklahoma coming up. Minnesota just terrific, knocking off Penn State, Iowa, and Wisconsin ahead for them. How far should Minnesota jet up the rankings from 17 after that? Yeah, that's another great question. You know, they beat number four. Um, and, and now you think that they're going to, I would think they're going to be in that top 10. Uh, hovering near the 8, 9, 10 mark. I, but I, the LSU team... I mean, the resume is staggering. You yeah, win at Tuscaloosa is about as good as it gets. Well, you win at Tuscaloosa, you win in Austin. When Texas was playing pretty good football early in the yeah. year, they beat Auburn, they beat Florida. It's hard to ignore all of that. I think they'll be one more than likely. Pass is complete. Hines spun down out near the 30 by Wallace. And, and the last thing I'll say is Joe Burrow, I don't want to say... I'm not just going to say wrapped up the Heisman, but... Boy, did he take a large step to New York City with a win. And a, the numbers that he put up, his team goes into Tuscaloosa. And he outduels Tua on that stage. Man, Joe Burrow, congratulations to that offense. I think he had 393 yards yeah. today. Three touchdowns. Billy Cannon, the only Heisman Trophy winner in LSU's history. They've only had one finalist in 40 years. And a return at the 25-yard line by Amari Rogers, the guy who was just chewed out by Dambo Sweeney. Chris Felica in the Bears' den with tonight's half trivia question. Bear? 
We're going to ask you an Aftock Trivia question tonight about something that is not going to happen this evening. But, however, I do want to know who was the last top five team to lose a November game to a team that did not have a winning record. Wow. To a team that did not have a winning record. That's the challenge. Yeah. State is 4-4. Four and four. Last top five team to lose a November game. Give us a minute. Good question. Tigers offense has been a little bit stagnant the last couple series. It's a first down throw. It's low. Ten yard gain. Catch is made by Ngata. Capital one line to gain. Cam will show you that Ngata was stopped about a half yard short. He's a talented receiver. It's hard to get looks in this offense when you got Ross and Higgins and Mari Rogers, but rangy guy out of California, pretty good speed. On a lot of teams, he'd be one of the featured receivers. And you see the depth that they have there. And a couple more receivers in Overton and Frank Ladson, another freshman. They just keep bringing in bigger and faster receivers. ETN. Kind of a quiet night so far. E.T. and a guy that's really caught fire the last few weeks. And Dabo Sweeney's words, he gave him some truth serum because he believes this guy will be one of, in his words, the greatest running backs in the history of the NFL. Yeah. Before he's done. He thinks yeah. he's that great. And he just got a little truth serum saying that you need to rededicate yourself, take care of the details. And he, he responded beautifully. He's very high on Travis as a person. And there goes ETN right on cue. Still running hard through an arm tackle to the 35-yard line. Maria? Well, Chris, you saw Dabo kind of getting after his offense. He wanted to see more. He didn't mince words when he came over and said, okay, you guys look awful. Co-offensive coordinator Jeff Scott saying, hey, 0-0 game. So let's focus again. And Trevor Lawrence telling his offensive line, hey, guys, let's get it back up. So the good news is that they had that huge run by ET in there, and they seem to be responding. Uh, Maria, that was a really nice job of the left side of that offensive line with Carmen and Simpson opening that hole up. 26-yard gain, and now Lawrence rolls out, and fire is incomplete. Intended for Higgins. We talked about the offensive line. You know, I would say in, in years past, those are the four veterans. You mentioned Carmen is the young guy starting in the left tackle position. Sometimes they didn't have a dominant offensive line, but maybe managed around it. The quarterback got the ball out quickly. But this group is has become a dominant offense. Yeah, I mean, if you go back to the Taj Boyd era, Sammy Watkins, it was a different kind of offense. It was more about the perimeter, more about the receivers and the quarterback. And they've made it intentional, make the offensive line, the running game, something they can hang their hat on. They've been able to do that the last four years. Pressure off the edges, picked up by the offensive line and the downfield throw to ETN, who makes the catch down inside the 10. It's first and goal. Boy, they, nice job here with the pressure coming late. How about that? John Simpson, the left guard, picks that up and, and gives Trevor Lawrence just enough time. He would have loved to have led him sneaking out on that wheel route against a linebacker. It's a mismatch. And when you give Lawrence time to throw, boy, if he leads him, he walks into the end zone, does a nice job. That's the area he's probably improved the most, his, his skills as a wide receiver out of the backfield. 27-yard catch after the 26-yard run. And ETN again to the middle. Down to the two. Dabo believes these great players really want to be coached hard. Yep. ETN has responded. I mean, I, I think he's the best back in college football. I really do. I think if, if he did carry it more, he'd have, his stats would be scary. There's some good backs out there. J.K. Dobbins at Ohio State. Jonathan Taylor. Uh, Chuba Hubbard at uh, Oklahoma State. Look at the big boys in there. You got Niles Pinkney, 44. Tyler Davis, 13. Two defensive tackles in the game. They, they love to do this at Clemson. And Simpson, the big fella, lined up in the eye formation. They give it to him. And he will barrel into the end zone. Big man touchdown for Clemson. <laughs> it's, it's a little, little early dance party broken out here. And somewhere Christian Wilkins is watching this saying, uh, uh, can I have gotten in the eye formation? I mean, he used to beg. He, did, he that. wanted that, didn't he? Yeah, he used to beg for the ball. But this time they put John Simpson, who's back in a lineup at left guard. That's that's rare to see. Usually you got a big fullback, one of these linemen. This time they had a fullback and a tail. Looks exhausted after a two-yard touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. He is, by the way, 330 pounds. So once he gets going downhill, forget about it. 
about the sideline reaction to the big guy? I mean, you can hear him screaming from up here. Two D linemen paving the way, and a tackle. Boom! Finds Pater. 35 nothing. Four and a half till half. <laughs>Thank you, Cassidy. We'll see the Sooners in Waco next week. See the Simpson, the first O lineman to score for Clemson since 11. Of course, we talked about Christian Wilkins, Dexter Lawrence scoring big man touchdown for the alma mater of Bridgewater Perry. So, this is Lassane, and he will be knocked down across the 20. And kick it back to the Bear. Do we, have we made a guess? I, 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 I thought USC Stanford, but I, I don't think that's. I'm just throwing yeah, one out there, Bear. Yeah, you, you're going back a little too further for, for the answer tonight's half like trivia question. It's not too long ago, 2017, when Miami was uh, number two in the country. Oh, oh. Yeah, that was after that th day after Thanksgiving. After Thanksgiving, they lost to the uh, and, and they beat uh, Notre Dame the week before, right? Everyone was all Dame excited about it. A couple of weeks, yep. Yeah. Exactly. It was the year they, of course, won the division title and got thumped yep. by Clemson. That it ended the season with three straight losses. Kane's a winner today. Man, heading right into traffic is Jordan Houston, the diminutive freshman running back. They've had no luck at all in the middle tonight. No, a couple times Knight has found the edge. No room at all. A lot of twists, a lot of blitzing, making it really challenging on the offensive line for NC State. Remember, two, two true freshmen on that left side. Leary delivers a bullet. He's got his strong arm. Sometimes his little too high velocity. You, you mentioned it when uh, I think it was Miami went and played in Charlotte the ACC championship. You know, if if UVA ends up making it to Charlotte, that's the seventh team to come out of the Coastal in seven years oh. to play Clemson. They keep coming that's in hard. there and taking the swings of the Tigers in Charlotte. I mean, that's hard to do. Seven different teams, all seven in seven years. Take their turn against Brent Venables and, the, and Dabo. One time, Ben. One Clay Carolina gave him a close game. Virginia Tech at one point. Yeah, it was a close game, but typically not. Leary is going to be wrestled down. He was able to fight for, for a short gain before Logan Rudolph wrapped him up. Yeah, and, and there's the twist we just talked about. Watch, watch the movement up front by that defensive line. You get Logan Rudolph. A big defensive end with a running back and Penix trying to pick him up and block him. Look at Brent Venables. He knows he has that call and he knows he got the matchup that he wanted and it got home and worked out perfectly. I think you'd like the shutout tonight. Do you get that feeling? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Trent Gill, chance to polish up his Ray Guy Award credentials here. Rogers drifting back, makes the fair catch way back inside the 30. Another good punt. Former Wolfpack quarterback Russell Wilson and the Seahawks continuing the 50th season of Monday Night Football against the 8 and 0 Niners, the last of the unbeatens in the NFL. Seahawks coming in at 7 and 2. Monday Night Countdown at 6, and then the Niners and the Seahawks at 8. That is a big time. That Monday Night Football. What about that big time dessert there? The, the funnel cake, fried Oreos. Wow. That's not on anybody's diet up here in the booth. This is maybe Darren, Darren Brown, your spotter, Perry. maybe, on his diet. Second half, may get a full report from Maria down there. Darren always wants me to say his name, and now he didn't like the, the context in which I used it. <laughs> Dixon busted around the edge and flashes some speed, and he's out near midfield. Now, Russell Wilson, again, he was the last freshman that started quarterback here. He, from the very beginning of his career, he just had a, a way about him. He was so cerebral, such a natural leader, and a winner, obviously. Yeah, had, had a great career here. Most people remember him, of course, from what he was able to do in the one year that he went up to play for Brett Bielema in Wisconsin up in Madison. But before he got up there, he had a great run here in Raleigh. Started every game in Raleigh. Of course, started in Wisconsin. Every game of his NFL career, he's been a starter. Boom! Lawrence did not see the pass rush coming right into the face. And Stephen Griffith laid the lumber. The reason he didn't see it is because he was counting on Lynn J. Dixon, the running back. Watch, watch the running back on the fake. He's got to have his eyes up, and he's got to get out there and pick that up. Watch Lynn J. Dixon carries this out. And all of a sudden, he looks back like, oh, my gosh, I blew it. I got my quarterback blown up. He's got to be able to feel that. His quarterback, 
is counting on him just like he counts on the offensive lineman to be able to pick up those blitzes. That time NC State caught Dixon napping. He was able to turn his shoulder just at the last second, but did get sandwiched. Second and 15, this time good protection. And the ball batted down at the line of scrimmage. And Murchison, 92, the veteran there in the middle. Nice job of, he couldn't quite get to Lawrence, but shows you the experience that he has. Just kind of waiting and goes up. Even though Lawrence is 6'6", he kind of had to throw the ball down, and so he didn't didn't have a chance to put it up and over top of Murchison because he's trying to just dump it down to the back. Murch came from a junior college, the best pass rusher on this team. On third down, it's a screen. Dixon in traffic. Works his way to midfield, but five yards short of the marker. Engel stopped him. I get really impressed with the way Engel was playing. Had some missed tackles last time out. Tonight, coming out ferocious in run support coming up and knocking people back chance to visit with Laurel Murchison and got a twin brother Pharrell who has been battling testicular cancer has actually come through it cancer free but that is adversity that is a setback and family his parents Glenda and Milton showing a whole lot of courage but you have a twin, you have your twin sons go through that. Yeah. He's a player at Winston Carolina Salem State, so he's come back from that cancer and is playing football just down the road. That's good to hear. There's a shot of the family. And yeah, he's a guy, young man that has perspective. It's it's a tough season. He's seen teammates go down with injuries, but to have your twin brother battle testicular cancer, that's yeah. very perspective. Tough, obviously. He's okay now though. Good to hear. He's really an anchor for this defense. All the injuries around him, he's been able to be out here and try to provide leadership and playmaking ability for that defensive line. Looks like Clemson, for that timeout by the Wolfpack, they were ready to go for it here on fourth and five. Minute two left till we get to the break. At the break, the halftime report, Capital One report brought to you with Kevin Nagani, Jonathan Vilma, and Mark Sanchez. We were kind of kidding about Dabo Sweeney making some notes and they're up 28 to nothing, but you know, they've, they've missed some shots. They've missed some It's not been as clean of a first half as I'm sure Dabo Sweeney would like They're gonna go some of the drops and things they've had in the passing game. So fourth and five Wolfpack showing pressure yeah, they're, they're coming here and here and, and He was able to adjust his protection Play clock at three. They snap it. Lawrence across the middle. And the catch is made by Dixon. will have the first down and a lot more. And loses the ball. Just dropped the football. He scrummed down there. Did he keep it? Yes. Retains possession. Moorhead was at the bottom of the pile. And Sweeney will make another note, no and, doubt, and call timeout. And the adjustment that he made is he knew he had pressure here, right? So he, he went up, made a check, just to get him out into the flat as quickly as he can. Because there's going to be nobody out there that can pick him up. If they're playing man to man, see the defender tries to get back to catch up, but he has no chance with the speed of Dixon. And Dixon fortunate here to be able to get his hands back on the ball. We talked about the lack of takeaways for NC State, just five on the season. Very Ooh. nearly had the six, but this is this has kind of been the story. Ball on the ground, a chance to maybe grab it, but not quite. Yeah. Len J. Uh, Dixon has a lot of ability as a runner, but you can see as he's running there, that ball is away from his body. Easy for a defender to knock that ball loose. Sweeney again. Up. Already 35 nothing. going for it there, looking for more before halftime. Goodyear Blip providing the aerial coverage, recognizing those who strive to rise above the rest. Goodyear, more driven. Tigers still with a couple of timeouts and 51 seconds to work with. You know, you'd think T. Higgins at the bottom here would love an opportunity to make amends for a couple drops if he can get one on one. Lawrence slipping as he sets up and now delivers the end zone, and it's caught by Justin Ross. Big catch in traffic, big throw after the slip. What's amazing is they, they tried to put two defenders on him to bracket him. I think they were sensing the same thing. I didn't know if they're going to go to Ross or go to Higgins, but he just kind of sensed they might take a vertical shot. 
They had a safety on the inside and a corner on the outside. But the ball is thrown so well, the defender never, never, I don't think he ever got his head turned around. Lawrence dropping a dime for 33 yards, the sixth touchdown reception of the year for Ross. And it is a six touchdown lead as we approach halftime. So you're going to have Amari Rogers here kind of work to the outside, and then you're just going to get one on one coverage there. But this safety kind of gets back and tries to bracket it and tries to take away the throw. I love that Trevor Lawrence, he slips, he's got protection. Now look downfield, he got two defenders, throws it anyway because he knows he can count on Justin Ross to adjust to the ball and leads it perfectly. And the safety 31, Moorhead, never really locates the ball. And as he does, the ball just goes right by him into the hands of Justin Ross. How about that throw downfield, though? Crazy. Very few safeties in the world can cover Justin Ross, and that was a tough assignment for Moorhead. Lawrence in the first half, 16 of 23, 221 yards, three touchdowns. And the Tigers approaching 400 yards total offense while allowing NC State 38 yards, 388 to 38. That is the gap in total offense in the first half, Mr. Herbstreet. Done a lot of games, partner. Watched a lot of games. Haven't seen the crowd leave in the first quarter very often. And a lot more have vacated here in the second quarter. Yeah. Tomorrow morning, Sunday NFL countdown. Aaron Donald returning to Pittsburgh. But before that, learn how the NFL's best defender was built in the Steel City. Peyton and Eli relive the helmet catch. It's countdown. 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. And speaking of the NFL, NC State has sent a bunch of players to the league in the last couple of years. They've had 11 players drafted. They had three other guys signed free agent contracts, undrafted players a year ago. And taken off in a big run here is Knight. Knight still going, rumbling down into Clemson territory. And the Wolfpack will have a chance to threaten before the break here. 34 seconds. They've got yep. one timeout left. One of the few times we've seen Clemson not be gap sound in the middle there and cost them. They bring pressure to Leary, but leave a man wide open on the far side, and Devin Carter makes the catch, and suddenly in two plays, they're at the Tigers' 15. And there's the arm strength right there that we've talked about from Devin Leary. Left hash all the way to the right sideline, in sync there with his receiver, Carter, for another nice game, back-to-back -back plays. And he gets out of bounds. Actually, they had 38 yards before this drive, 60 now in a couple plays. Leary looks left and delivers a throw. Catch made by Amezi, and he's knocked out at the 10, down to 18 seconds. They can keep that timeout. Trying to work the flats right now, this Clemson defense. Clemson a little softer in coverage here, so late in this first half. And Leary's been able to find a couple holes in that coverage. Now that they get tighter inside that red zone, expect Clemson to tighten it up a little bit more. Three receivers bunched to the right, including Angeline, the tight end, who's had a quiet night so far. They bring pressure. The snap gets away. And another fumble for NC State. Xavier Thomas falls on it. And that is a painful punctuation to a one-sided first half. Wow. Went right through the hands of Devin Leary on the snap. It was a good snap right there. Just went right through his hands. I think he peaked. I think he felt that they were blitzing off the edge. And he started look up for that blitz. And he took his eyes off the ball. I think he's just peaked. See Xavier Thomas coming in there. And take your eyes off the ball just for a second. Next thing you know, it's on the ground. And the shutout is still intact. The third fumble by NC State. And it really hadn't been a problem for them. They had rarely fumbled all year. Only had nine turnovers. And they've matched their season total in fumbles here in the first half tonight. And that will be the final play. Durham with a kind of a stricken look on his face. He knew they were overmatched. He thought his team would fight, but too many mistakes 
way too much Clemson talent. End of the first half. Kevin, Jonathan, and Mark coming up with a halftime report right after these messages. We got an opportunity tonight to punch our ticket to Shark. Saturday night. A little early dance party broken out here. Well, welcome back. Saturday Night Football on ABC presented by Bass Pro Shops and Cabello's in this presentation of the ACC on ESPN. First founder Kirk Herbstreit and Maria Taylor. We sort of expected something like this. Maybe not a six touchdown margin at the break as Clemson kicks off to begin the third quarter, but the attitude that the Tigers brought into this game, feeling a little bit unloved down there at number five. We knew they wanted to punish somebody. NC State has been shorthanded, but beyond that has made a whole bunch of mistakes and made it even easier for Clemson. Yeah, a young football team because of injuries. They needed a break early, and instead it went the other way. And the miscues really backfired on them. And this Clemson team, I mean, it's not just the rankings. I think they feel disrespected as defending national champs and starting tonight, moving forward. They're on a mission. So it, I, I'm guessing Dabo Sweeney with the orange britches on tonight trying to <laughs> clinch the Atlantic did not even talk about the score. Leary's had a tough second start in his career. Had a couple of non-contact fumbles by the quarterback. Hasn't thrown an interception, but here is the Pacific Life the game summary. A total of three fumbles. This one just comes out of his hand. It scooped up. That turned into a touchdown. Then near the end of the half, they were threatening to break up the shutout, and the snap just gets away from him. Yeah, I mean, they're fumbling the ball, and they're giving Trevor Lawrence a short field to work with. This is near the end of the half. Makes a perfect throw downfield to Justin Ross, and going to be pretty happy, even with a few drops by T. Higgins, which is a little bit surprising. Still a really good first half. It's like A.J. Terrell down on the first play here. A.J. Terrell, the cornerback, of course, who made the, the pick six against Tua Tungabaloa very early to set the tone of the championship game. Maria? Hey guys, well I talked to Dabo coming back out on the field and Herbie mentioned that he was keeping a list of the good and the bad and so far he says the bad, there's really only three things on the list and they're execution errors, those two drop touchdown passes and also lining up offsides. But the good that he loves is being 42 and oh, right now, or 42 to zero and he ultimately said his defense is forcing turnovers, Trevor's playing great and he loves the way they're executing. Zonovan Knight running to the left. They, yeah, did, they did sort of force one turn, but then the two just flat out drops by the Wolfpack. Yeah, and, and you know, you're, you're uh, Maria's talking to Dabo, and Dabo's up 42 to nothing in half. I mean, the fact he's able to come up with two or three things is probably a little bit challenging, but he did have a few drops there, and they still have the starters in. I mean, they're, they are not taking their foot off the gas at all. Now, Venables looked fired up when they recovered that fumble to preserve the shutout to the last possession of the second quarter for NC State. Need five to keep this drive going. And Leary looked left, now has some space and can run for it. And he will scoot out of bounds at the 38. More than enough for a first down. Yeah, good feel there by the youngster. Again, second career start. Just a redshirt freshman. I think he felt that corner blitz coming from his left on the boundary and saw a nice big opening in the exact area that that blitz came from and was able to pick up the first. And now looks to throw in first down and zips it to Emeka Mezzi, the junior who is the favorite target throughout this season, but it has a quiet night. Hey, some positive plays here for the Wolfpack, and, and Leary that time started right, kind of sensed that Skowski, the linebacker, was taken away, his inside receiver off to his right, immediately came back to the left where there was an opening and made a good throw. Knight breaks free, into the clear, heading for the end zone, they'll not catch him, and NC State quickly to start this second half with a 53-yard touchdown run to get on the board. Great block by the center, Gibson. He's able to handle Niles Pinckney on a zone play, just kind of pushes him. Watch the center here, 50. Watch him work, work, push, push. It gives him just that crease there to be able to cut off behind the thing that I think you'll find 
Brent Venables and Dabo Sweeney frustrated with is the safeties there not able to come up and instead of it's a gain of eight or ten instead he splits the two safeties the veterans Tanner Muse and Kayvon Wallace and takes it all the way to the end zone for a touchdown shake of the head from Sweeney well Pack had just 38 total yards before that drive that ended the half and now they find the end zone Chris Dunn adds the PAT 42 7 Clemson. Off. Fair catch made at the one yard line. Thompson can win two trophies tonight. We talked about the Atlantic Division trophy, which they can clinch, and also they can keep control of the Textile Bowl trophy. These two programs have strong textile roots, it's a big part of the economy in both of the Carolina states. And this has been the Textile Bowl since 1981. Clemson is going to make it eight in a row. NC State often showing some life the last couple of possessions here. They're now on the board. Nice long bolt by Zonovan Knights. On the edge, Rogers in heavy traffic. Couldn't get the block out there he needed in the Wolfpack gang up on him. I think as this offense continues to evolve, you know, with their playmakers, I think T. Higgins and Justin Ross with their length both around 6'4 get downfield and give Trevor Lawrence a great target downfield. But I, I think you're really going to see Amari Rogers, Overton, some of these other receivers, the yards after the catch. We used to see that a lot with Artavis Scott and Hunter Renfro. Big part of this offense, I still feel. The five receiver look at the pre snap fall start against the Tigers. Fall start. It'll be another offense, note. Offense, number 79. Five yard penalty, second down. Jackson Carmen, interesting guy, a well rounded human being. He plays piano, guitar, he sings, he bakes cakes. Wow. He surfs. He's got it all covered. All around. Big fella surfs. Big, big fella can surf. It's athletic movement. Great balance. You ever surf? Only on one of those long boards where it's yeah. really hard to fall off. Yeah. It's not Kelly Slater style. No, 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 no. Wouldn't do that to you. Play action on second and 14. Lawrence wanted a downfield shot. Now will take off by time. Still thinking about throwing. He'll just scoot out of bounds up near the 30. You know, when, when NC State has played man to man, it, it's been tough for their secondary. We can play, we got another guy going down, another entry. When they played man to man, it's it's hurt them. That's where Clemson's come up with their bigger plays. When they've sat in zone, it's it's forced Trevor Lawrence to hold on to that ball a lot longer. Calvin Hart making his first career start for the Wolfpack is the man down on the field. Take a break. Saturday Night Football, presented by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's on ABC, is brought to you by USAA. Let's thank our veterans. Join us at USAA.com slash Veterans Day. And the Double Chalupa Box, only at Taco Bell. We salute all of our armed forces and the veterans, including those who support Clemson and NC State around the world. It's still bomber there. Oh, yeah. Also his favorite aircraft. Yeah, right. Clemson fans around the world pleased about this. Although the offense does face a third and six. After NC State finally dented the scoreboard. Still empty backfield. We'll pack the rush three. Lawrence has plenty of time, delivers across the middle, and it's Rodgers who makes the catch and does move the sticks to the 38. Nice job of giving Lawrence the time that he needed there, and a really good field by Amari Rodgers. Watch three to the right. Watch him settle and then work back to the middle. It's kind of like an option route where he can feel the linebacker, feel the leverage of coverage, and then there's the relationship and that rhythm between Trevor Lawrence and Amari Rodgers. Calvin Hart, who was hurt, is now back in the game. On first down, ETN wrestled down. That was a nice tackle by yeah. James Smith-Williams. Yeah, a really good job of getting his right arm in there. Moorhead looked like he helped out as well. Smith Williams with his size showing some pretty good athletic ability at 265 because ET <laughs> he's just starting to hit fifth gear. And if he hits that crease, it's tough to stop him. And it doesn't take him long to get get that speed up, right? That acceleration. Closing in on another hundred-yard game. He's got 87. And there's a throw. 
Downfield and the catch is made by Frank Ladson Jr. Just his sixth of the season, the freshman. And watch the corner here. He kind of comes in. Nobody gets a hand on the freshman Ladson. And I think Trevor Lawrence immediately saw that he had a quick throw without without getting rerouted or jammed there. Made it very, very easy to put that ball just right in front of the safety for an easy pickup in a first down. ETN. Muscles for about four. Purchasing stopped him. I, I keep marveling at the safety play. I mean, I know they're getting beat, and I know it's been a long night. But watch the safety right here just come up on the on the tight end. Boom! Just puts him on his back. I mean, Ingle, he, he must have said, listen, we might not win this game, but I'm coming out to hit people tonight against Clemson. He's been laying the wood all night. ETN's got it on the pitch. He cannot make the edge. Forced out at the 40. The reason I point that out is you're down 42 to 7. You know, it's been a long year with injuries. It's pretty easy to get discouraged. But I think Dave Doran, when he looks at that, that's, that's a competitive spirit that you love to see. This guy, Engel, man, he is, he's bringing that tonight. And by the way, NC State still very much in play for what would be a, a nice goal this year given the issues, a bowl. Yeah. At Louisville and Georgia Tech, the the chances of making the ball will really come down to those next couple of games. And they're backing out. Trevor now, Trevor's, he's checked twice. NC State backed out. It looked like tight man coverage, playing a little more zone. And now a whistle and a flag before the snap. It's a false start, so all that checking created the penalty. False start. Offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty. Third down. It's Tremaine Anchor, one of the deep thinkers on the offensive line, the right tackle. He's going to give you a run for his money someday. He wants to be a broadcaster when, when he hopes a long playing career is over. He went down, dude. Talk about analysis. He analyzed everything from teammates, opponents, the culture. Comes in a very thoughtful guy. As I say, you aim yeah. higher yeah. than being a broadcaster. Yeah. He could be a governor or something. And Clemson, you know, Debo Swinney told us that this team has as much chemistry, if not even more chemistry, than than the team a year ago with, that, with guys like that and leadership like that. But it's another false start. Snap and fracture. Starting to get sloppy. Offense, five-yard penalty. What? Watch Third down. Trevor Lawrence here. Demo Swinney fired up here. Well, watch the snap. He's, he's talking to the offensive line coach. Watch. watch. He's like, yeah. Travis Etienne, let's get it all set. We on the same page. Boom. Mm. Ball snapped. A couple of guys moving at the snap. Yeah. He was obviously not even thinking about the ball and being snapped at that point. Coach Caldwell was in the, the dance circle the other, the other year. I saw that. Third and 14. And delayed handoff. UTN sort of bumps into traffic and then makes a nice move and still fights hard and gets down inside the 40. It'll be fourth and about three. Showing great effort. Yeah, I mean, even the exchange here was sloppy with Trevor Lawrence when he handed the ball off. I I think it almost came out. He hurdles the guy. He took a shot in midair, so landed and kept going. Exchange. It was like, uh, uh, he, yeah, he bobbled it right, right there. He's lucky to hold on to it. Bobbled it, ran into the back of the center, Pollard. Dixon is in the game now. It's fourth and three. He need the 35-yard line. And Lawrence from the pocket pitches downfield, and Overton's got it. Still running and fighting down inside the five-yard line as the rangy senior gets involved. Uh, he felt, we talked about Engel as a blitzer. There he is, 10, takes off, means he's got one-on-one. -on -one. Overton comes back, high points the ball, goes up and over and makes that play. Really good job. There's the blitz. They brought both the safeties. Zero man coverage, one-on-one, -on -one, and the best man win. And DeAndre Overton goes up and over coverage there and shows those strong hands. 32-yard gain, and now Dixon slipped as he tried to make a cut, and he'll lose back to the 8-yard line. That's the risk you take when you come after Trevor Lawrence and these receivers. You play them in man-to-man. -man. You don't have safeties, two high safeties that can try to help you on that deep ball. They have such length. And he puts that ball in the air. You don't have a safety to come over and help knock it away. And you better get to him on that pressure. He's going to make you pay for it.
ETN in the game, too tight and look. And Travis has it and muscles and fights. Kind of back his way into the end zone. And he's just dragged across the goal line for another touchdown, his third tonight. And the yes. freshman, Davis Allen, and your run. the tight end, he's helping out. Good effort, of course, by Travis Etienne with the leg drive, just powering through. But he'll have some help from some of his linemen. There's 84, a true freshman, the tight end. He's he's got a, a he's got a hold of him. He's pulling him into the end zone. I know I gotta ask Dave Katai about that. You see it sometimes in the NFL games. It's one thing to push a running back or a a quarterback into the end zone. Another thing to grab a hold of him like a defender and pull him into the end zone. You can push him, you can pull him, you can carry him, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> you can't pull him. You can't not pull him. <laughs> well, they didn't get it. 49-7. Tough to see. And also on ESPN Plus, serious detail with Nick Saban. It's going to feature Todd Coach breaking down the way they defend the run-pass option. And he looks at why theirs is so dangerous, exclusively on ESPN+. Plus. Defense was riddled today, though, by oh, Joe Burrow yeah. and LSU. What a show by the passing game of the Bayou Bengals in the victory of Tuscaloosa. Boy, that Joe Burrow offense, they've been doing it all year. Well, Jeff Heaser is out. An injury for the referee and his crew, and Larry Saunders is in. So it's the Larry Saunders show from here on out. Certainly hope Jeff heals up okay. It's a physical job down there and on a cold night. Again, a leg injury. So they always have always have someone off the bench there. Dave Kataya has been waiting for a rep here. So ex ex explain this. There's always an alternate guy ready to jump into whatever position. Every crew sets up two key positions. The referee's number one, umpire's number two. But they're all capable of rotating, and they rotate depending on their experience and their and and the center judge is normally going to rotate the referee because he's in the offensive back and sees the same stuff as the referee does. Larry goes down. We may send Dave down there. Dave, have you ever, you ever had an injury in a game and have to come out? I've never had to come out. I got to go in once. Uh, you were the alternate? I was the alternate one game. Get, 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 get in there. We got an injury. No, no, no. He, he didn't get the email. He's the third guy tonight. If Larry goes down, Dave's in. <laughs> <laughs> Fair catch made. Let's get on to Maria. <laughs> Well, guys, we've seen uh, Travis Etienne make a ton of plays all over the field. I've enjoyed talking to him about the guys that he models his game after, and this guy loves to watch film of NFL running backs. Some of the guys that he loves, Alvin Kamara, he loves his hands, his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield, and that's something that he works on a lot with the jugs. Saquon Barkley loves his vision, the patience that he shows sometimes when he's running. Adrian Peterson, the legs to, to get a touch but not tackled and taken down. And Leonard Fournette, that upper body strength, the stiff arm. Remember, he grew up in Louisiana, so he loved watching him coming up. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that, that upper body strength, Maria, that's the area that he's probably going to grow the most when he becomes a, a pro. His lower body is as strong as any back you'll see. But Dabo talking to us this week, he's still a young guy. He's, so he's still developing. And... Pretty, it's an off night, though. Pretty soon he'll have that. He's only averaging eight yards a carry tonight, Kirk. Nine for the season. So he's got he's got to get a few more carries going. Try to get that back up. Do you echo what he said? Projecting forward, I mean, just a superb NFL career because of all he can do. Well, yeah, because he's so versatile in the NFL game. Like an Alvin Kamara, I mean, you're not only running the ball, you're catching the ball, you're creating matchups against linebackers and. That's the area that I think, like I said earlier, he's grown the most as a receiver. He came in knowing how to run. He's gotten so much stronger. Dabo used the, the term collision balance that he has because he's he's tough to bring down with that lower body strength. Higgins was joking when ETN came in, small town, Jennings, Louisiana, wearing braces. He thought he looked like a walk-on. Yeah. <laughs> now he's built like himself. Doesn't look like yeah. a walk-on anymore. Third and ten. Just barely get the play off, and Leary backpedals and throws into traffic, and it's nicely broken up there. I remember Turner. One of his first games was at Louisville. You and I called, and we, he had a long touchdown run. We shot, took a shot of him on the sideline. He had braces. I just thought he looked like a high school guy. Like he just looked <laughs> like a kid right out of high school, and just was like big eyed and just having a, a great time. Like, man, I can't believe I just scored a, a big long touchdown for the Clemson offense. He's really matured over the last couple of years. Will Sweeney, coach's son, and does the holding for the Tigers. Gets a rep at punt return, standing at the 35-yard line. And he'll have to retreat. 
good punt by Gill over his head and bouncing all the way into the end zone. So about a 75-yard punt. And we talked about Isaiah Simmons being a versatile player. Here he is like a nickel back up near the line of scrimmage. They'll put him out. He'll be playing man-to-man, -man, be on an island. Here he is as a middle linebacker. Here he is as a free safety. Here he is, you know, able to make plays and run support. This guy does everything. And that's why Mel Kuyper and all the NFL GMs, Todd McShay, everybody's talking about Isaiah Simmons as one of the top picks. It's not just because of how big and fast he is. He's 6'4", 230 pounds, because he does everything. Chase Bryce is in. That may be it for Lawrence. Bryce has played a lot of football this year as a backup because Trevor has rarely been in the fourth quarter of games, and it may be... The Lynn J. Dixon story as well. A pretty good night for Trevor Lawrence if he, in fact, is done. Put his team up 49 to 7, 20 to 27, 276, and Holding three touchdowns. Holding offense number 80, 10 yard penalty, first down. It's Luke Price, the backup tight end. He sensed he could have a big night against the secondary that's replacing a whole lot of starters. Wake Forest will come in there. The next challenge for Clemson in Death Valley off the loss in Blacksburg, but very capable with their quarterback, Jamie Newman, of moving the ball. And the challenge for Clemson is going to be showing up every week with the same intensity, regardless of the opponent. And if they do that, they're, they're going to be tough for anybody, obviously, to beat. Sweeney makes the catch, and he's knocked down hard right near the marker. Who do you think's faster, you guys, Simmons or Travis Etienne? This was earlier in their career. They're going to do a rematch, but take a look how close this is. Keep in mind, it's a speedy running back and a linebacker. ATN just leans him at the tape, but wow. that's how close it was. Wow, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good race. I would love to see that today. I would still go with ETN, but Isaiah Simmons can fly. That is respectable yeah. for a linebacker. Play action, and Bryce zips it up in and out of the hands of Mangata. So that's a third drop for the Tigers receiving court tonight. Yeah, Chase Bryce did exactly what he's been trained to do. He had a safety blitz, has one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, got a great receiver, has got soft coverage with Dunlop out there as a freshman, and Mangata, who's got a, a, a bright future ahead of him, just not able to hold on to that. He said three drops, very uncharacteristic for this group to have any drops. Pretty much all backups in for Clemson offensive line. Skill and Bryce, and this is Dixon, who's going to be knocked down for a loss there. Drake Thomas, the freshman linebacker, fought off the block. Yeah, it does a nice job right here. Watch him be able to just kind of get that penetration. Fight through some traffic. Does a good job of getting off the potential block there. Looked like the receiver, Cornell Powell, was trying to come in there and pick up a block, unable to do that. Good, good instincts there, good feel. So, a shaky sequence for the Clemson backups on offense. Dixon is the back on third and 14. NC State showing a three man rush. And they'll drop in coverage and make Bryce find somebody open, and it's deflected and nearly intercepted. Jalen Scott got a hand on it, and it's fourth down. Yeah, zone again, just sitting back, reading the quarterback's eyes. Good job of getting depth by Scott. Boy, they've tested the depth of these linebackers. They came in playing three freshmen, making their first starts. They've had a couple injuries, so they've had to rotate different bodies. That time, Scott got the depth and able to knock it away. You pointed out Engel just playing his butt off tonight. It really is. Showing a lot of heart yep. as an undersized safety. One of the few guys who's not a would-be backup. And Spires gets the punt away. And Hines will let it bounce, and it'll roll dead at about the 15-yard line. Curtis Wilson on the All-State bus making the trip here to Raleigh, keeping us up to date on this wild afternoon. Veterans Week, our driver Curtis is a U.S. Army veteran, served in the 80s. What's your mayhem moment today? Uh, it has to be this game. Clemson, or uh, LSU and Alabama. We saw this, it uh, looked like LSU was up big. Alabama looked like they may come back, pulled within a possession, and then Coach O 
gets the huge win. Eight game losing streak is over. LSU goes to Tuscaloosa and Joe Burrow, the player that he says the best recruit maybe ever for LSU. They find a way to win and looked impressive doing it. Joe Burrow in the driver's seat now for the Heisman Trophy. And the reverse, trying to get the edge is insane and he's knocked out. Quarterback comparison in that game, Tunga Baloa clearly not 100%, 21 of 40. Did throw one pick before halftime, which is crucial. Burrow was almost flawless. And here's something to keep in mind. Both defensive coordinators had two weeks to get ready to face these quarterbacks in this system. Nick Saban and his defensive staff and Dave Aranda, two of the great defensive minds, and still look at the numbers that those offenses put up. The receiving core, both just yeah, scary. Oh gosh, and, and it's just such a different era now with those quarterbacks and with the systems uh, that they're running. Joe Brady came over from the Saints, worked with Sean Payton and Drew Brees, and brought that NFL-style system to the LSU offense. Five receivers going out at a time. Just a different feel compared to those low-scoring LSU Alabama games. Knight made the run, got up, and then sat back down, holding his left knee. We'll take a break. Plenty for the committee of 13 in Grapevine, Texas to chew on and the exclusive reveal of the new CFP Top 25 will be Tuesday over on ESPN, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Tell you what, everybody at home, go get a pen, go get a piece of paper. Everybody try to write down, like the committee, right now. That's what you're doing. Who, yeah. <laughs> who your, give me who your fourth, fifth, and sixth teams are right now. LSU and Ohio State and Clemson are going to be in the top three. Who's four, five, and six? So do you go for some of the unheralded unbeatens in Minnesota? Well, Minnesota was at, what, Baylor. 17? They, get, yeah. they beat number four. Offside, they're, they're on, if they defense, can, number 59 with contact. Baylor, Five -yard Baylor penalty, held on for dear life. The they, they know they did. I'm not, I'm not now, saying. Now, if they beat Oklahoma before. next week, now they start, we start to talk a little different. But right now, who the candidates for you to move into four, five, and six. Bama was at three, so that would be a consideration. Penn State's out. Georgia would be a team I probably would think about maybe moving to Fort Oregon and Utah out west. Just, just Oklahoma in the Big 12. I'm, the I'm, not, yeah. I'm not arguing for it, but Leary drops back and delivers a downfield throw. Broken up. You know, Penn State has a loss at Minnesota. Alabama has a loss. Yeah. There's the All-State rankings I mean, coming in. Yeah, look, look at the losses with Alabama and Penn State. The question is, where do these guys go? Where do they go? Because they don't have a marquee win, yet it's obviously a very talented team. So with the committee, do they go from three to five? Do they go three to seven? How do they move Oregon and Utah? Do they move them ahead? You know, who who is Oregon and Utah beaten? They, no, that's the thing. It's going to be well, that's why obviously it's in flux. If they arrive at the Pac-12 championship game each with a loss, that's different. Story. That would be a yeah. that would be a, a showdown. You know, Georgia, the loss at home to South Carolina, a team that is losing on that home field to Appalachian State tonight. Good team, but a team that just got beat by Georgia Southern on Halloween night, going to Columbia and beating the team that beat Georgia. That that'll be more fodder. Yeah. By the way, they're enjoying that one in the press box here. They enjoyed the South Carolina is losing. I, I think as much as the Pac-12 has been written off by some, the fact that Oregon and Utah potentially meet with one loss, I think the winner of that game is going to have, with the way everything's playing out, you can become a conference champion and you're coming out of the Pac-12. If they both meet at 11-1, and one, that, that could be a big day for the Pac-12. Now, you're saying Penn State drops out of that position, but if the Nittany Lions, say, go to Columbus yeah, and pull the upset, win back. the division, they, they would have the oh, tiebreaker. Yeah. They'd be All headed side. to Indy. And, 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 then, and, then, number 11. and then go play Minnesota Five again. Yeah. And it, I mean, that's a down. whole different story. I'm saying where we sit right sure. now. You're not writing them off from no. contention. You're saying no. that you got to go right to the now, back you gotta, seat. Yeah, you got to drop. Just like Alabama, it's like you got to drop. How far do you drop? And who do you move ahead of them? That's going to be fun for the committee. Where do they meet? Down in Texas? They do. They Suburban do. Dallas in Grapevine. Grapevine, Texas. Yeah. That'll be a good week for them. Shovel pass on the inside. And it's a tricky play. And Penix makes his first touch of the night and gets into Clemson territory. Nice conception of that play. Chase says Bama four. I don't, I, there's no way Bama. Son, yeah. There's no way you put Bama at four, right? There were three this week. Well, 
for a while there, they're getting blown out. You're wondering would the margin of the yes. loss really play into the committee's conversation given the weaker than normal resume. Leary chased and despite to make a play and scoots out, makes something of nothing. Still out there fighting despite a, Absolutely. a frustrating yeah. night for him. Yep. You know, and, and, and for his career, every rep that he's taking against Brent Venables' defense is so valuable, so so important for him to be able to learn, not only tonight while he's taking these reps, but when he goes over the film tomorrow or Monday and sees what he did right and what he did wrong, and, and it'll allow him to really take a big step in growth as a young freshman. It's his season, by the way. They're not going to bring in Matt McKay or Bailey Hockman, the guys who started the first seven games here, unless Leary gets hurt. It's his show. Long, strong throw downfield, and the catch is made by Angeline, the tight end, finally with his first catch at NC State as a first and goal. Yeah, good job, I thought, that time by Leary. He had a little bit of pressure. His, his own back, Houston, kind of got in his way. Then he just puts it up, uses that height at 6'7 to go up and make the play to the tight end. Houston. Stutter step and the little guy right into traffic. This has been an unable to create any creases. A flag down from the near side of the field. Another look at the athletic play man by the junior from Pennsylvania. Illegal formation offense. Five players in the backfield. Five yard penalty. First down. I, I love how Leary put it up in the air because of the six seven. Look how tall he is. He can go up and high point the ball. And Nolan, Nolan Turner, who's a Really sound, solid player for this secondary. Only at 6 1, so big advantage. That's why he puts it up in the air. Only targeted twice tonight. He's got a really good percentage this year of catches when they do target him, but the Tigers have taken him away. End of three, 49 7. Tiger is back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Hey, Wolf Pack, Major David Walliser. Class of 2003, North Carolina Army National Guard. Go Pack! Mr. Walser, thank you for your service. His beloved Wolfpack beginning the fourth quarter in a 49-7 hole, but threatening here. And Leary launches it over the end zone. Good discipline that time by this Clemson defense try to use that jet sweep with the freshman Lassane tried to affect the eyes of the Clemson defense but boy they stayed home the big fella Pinckney getting in there and, and forcing Leary to throw that ball away so the offense at all the backups and these are defensive starters on the field though for Brent Venables defense Pinckney Davis up front Second and goal. Houston just spun down. A flag comes in late. Mike Jones Jr., who is a backup, made the tackle that there. That looked like it's going to be hands in the face by 66. Fed Jackson threw, got his hands up in Pinkney's face. That's why his helmet came off. The only thing I, I could think of a flag. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Offense number 66. 15 yard penalty. Second down. Larry Saunders, who was the center judge replacing referee Heaser, gets a rep. There's a penalty. Yeah, his hands were in good position there on his shoulder. They, that left hand got up high and obviously right in front of the umpire. It's a no no. <laughs> when the hat comes off, it's usually yeah. cut red handed. <laughs> yeah. You're right, Chris. They're, you know, they're rotating a, a few guys. Here comes Tanner Muse. Here comes Isaiah Simmons. Here comes Kayvon Wallace. I don't think Brent Venables knows the score of the game. 49-7. He's still working with that first unit. Second and goal from the 28 after the penalty. And Leary looking to get some of it back. Trying to buy time and runs out of it as he's run down from behind by Logan Rudolph. I tell you, you want to talk about effort? A motor? Watch 34 Logan Rudolph right here. Watch out. Watch where he comes from. He's going to go down. He's on the ground right there. He gets up, does not stop. When I asked Brent Venables, what do you like about Rudolph? They lost all these great D linemen. What do you like about this kid, Rudolph? He said, didn't even hesitate. His motor, consistency. He's been that guy, man. Take a hundred 
Logan Rudolph. The loss was a yard, so that's his first sack of the season. Third and goal as they continue to go backwards. Pressure on the blitz, delivers over the head of his receiver in the end zone, and Leary got leveled by heavy pressure. Remember, he lost Christian Wilkins, Dexter Lawrence, all those great defensive linemen. We just showed you one defensive lineman that stepped in. Here's a true freshman, Tyler Davis, using his hands and his quickness. Man, that's 300 pounds forcing Leary to get that ball out quickly. So fourth and goal. And they will try a long field goal. Chris Dunn, very reliable, has excellent range. 15 of 18 on the season. And we said their kicking game is exceptional. And he drives it right through. Lou Grozik, contender, happy about his kick, cuts the lead to 39. I can remember coming back, watching a college football game back, I think it was 88. Mm. There was a, a sideline reporter just stands out to me. <laughs> I remember, if, you were a 88's young, a long time ago. You were a young whippersnapper back in 88, weren't you? I was, it was the first year I was involved in college football. Was it? Yeah. Here's a kickoff. Drives it and fair catch made. Back in rally, it is mayhem here. You can pay 15 bucks to stand on the grass. They are tackling me, they're so fired up. About 8,000 fans are down here. Back upstairs before we get into the control, guys. You know, we were going to check very shortly on an apparent injury to Naz Worthen. We may have to check on Chris first. <laughs> oh, oh, man. You were sort of trying to survive down there. I, it, there was right down there. There used to be a grass bank. Now they put seats in there, which is now empty. That, that was a little more chaotic than I remember. I hadn't seen that clip in the 31 years since before they dug it up. Thanks yeah. to the crew for digging yeah, that that up. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, I, Rice I, was the ball falls I on I it. I saw it. Two questions for you. Number one, the, the jacket, 1988. French guy. coat. And then you had the the, the headset. like With the antenna on it. Antenna. Yeah, yeah look, that, that is a look that I think that yeah. we should be brought back. What are you going? What are you going with there? I, <laughs> I didn't shoot. They just gave me the headset. What do you want me to say? They just down he goes. Man down. Man down. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive <laughs> balance, by the way. I never, I never stopped looking at the camera. Notice how I maintained eye contact. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. What do you think about that, Maria? Would you like to get that headset with the uh, antenna look? On? Chris, first of all, I just want to congratulate you on staying in the pocket. I always yes. say sideline reporting like being in the trenches. How about but, um, the stiff arm? Do you like the did, stiff arm? Did you immediately decide that you could only be in the booth from then on? Was that the <laughs> first and last time you ever were sideline No, I love doing sidelines. I did it for two years. <laughs> that that moment was not my favorite moment. But you were like, to the booth. I'm going look, to the booth. You, the, look, you went in the Penn State student section of Whiteout. You, you, right. Risk is a part it's of the treacherous. job, Marie. You know that. Third and 24 for the Tiger offensive backups here. You were shimmy in there. I, I didn't know. Were those bleachers you were trying oh, to navigate? Those are grass bank. Grass bank, okay. The That's guy who I had shoved, I stiff from the guy. He came he crawling back up. He, he grabbed got, my leg. You got aggressive. He, gra <laughs> he grabbed my leg. It was trying to tug me down. Watch the initial blow. Oh, here, I give you. It, here's an instant replay. Watch the initial blow. <laughs> Get off me. Get off. Dude behind you in a blue coat. It's like, yeah, man. Totally, dude. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm just gone. You're like, I'm very now he's grabbed my leg and right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But you just you just can never lose your cool. As Maria knows, you got to maintain eye contact with the camera no matter what's going on. <laughs> like you were not leaving that camera. <laughs> oh man, I'm done. 11:45 to play. Tequila time. Soon, but not soon enough. Saturday Night Football on ABC is presented by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. In part by Pacific Life. 150 years strong. Protection and retirement solutions for your future. And the all-new Ford Explorer. Built Ford Proud. Our Festive times here in Raleigh. Hey, tomorrow afternoon on ABC, the 24th MLS Cup from CenturyLink. 
in Seattle. The Sounders hosting Toronto FC. Champions in 2016 and 17. 3 o'clock Eastern on ABC and also on the ESPN app. NC State football back. Still battling for pride to make it look a little bit more respectable. Kevin Leary in the game rolls to his right. Nobody open. And that was the best decision. Tigers were all over the three receivers on that side. And he scoots out across the 40. Here's the Pacific Life game summary. The yardage dominance, not as much as it was late in the second quarter, but NC State um, had 38 total yards. Look, look at the, the bottom line there, 403 yards in the first half. The three turnovers, all fumbles by NC State in that first half, making things even more difficult. But they're still, they're still battling. And still trying to make something happen on offense. And he's bouncing it outside, and Houston is knocked down. Nice job by Foster there. Nobody picked him up. He's just kind of hanging on that edge. Does a good job setting the edge, getting to the outside. NC State in the second half, they've had a little bit of success trying to bounce runs out wide, and that time Foster took that away. On third and eight, pressure, and Leary dumps it off. And Houston's got it out of the backfield, and finally a productive play for the diminutive running back into Clemson territory, first down at the 44. Right time to call that. Third and eight, sensing that uh, Brent Venables may dial up the, the blitz, and that's exactly what he did. Then it's just a matter of trying to get it over top of these linebackers, and even Isaiah Simmons as he comes in. Nice job by the young quarterback, just kind of drawing him towards him and then getting up and over Isaiah Simmons to Houston, who's got great speed in the open field. Valen Spector, the backup linebacker, was down. He's been able to trot off to the field. Boy, Leary, the first two starts of his career against a, a pretty rugged Wake Forest team and this monster Clemson tonight. Houston cuts it back, and he is slammed down after a four-yard gain by K.J. Henry. Producer Bill Bunnell loves this. This is the first rankings released in all six years now of the playoff. Mississippi State way back at 14 was the first number one. And you think that this order in this right column this year will be uh, significantly reshuffled. You've, you've got Alabama and Penn State with the losses dropping out. Yeah. yeah. I've talked about putting Ohio State because of the consistency at one because they played on offense and defense but you cannot take away from what this team has done and not only today but winning in texas early in the year beating florida beating auburn those are four really impressive wins that i think will push lsu probably to the top after going to tuscaloosa the, the u.s viewers to get the pen out and, and rank yeah rank their fourth team fourth fifth team what, what did you is that video? Are we going to show that later? Or you want to I don't know. It now? I, I, I had LSU, Ohio State, Clemson at three, Georgia at four, and then I would probably put Bama at five, and Oklahoma, if they end up beating Iowa State, they're up by a couple scores right now. This is a review. They called intentional grounding on Leary. They're looking to see if maybe he was down before the ball was thrown. Did not look like he was, mm -mm. and it was a clearly a case of grounding. No one was close. So third and 21. They bring the blitz again, and Leary escapes this time, and he's got some green grass because he was able to elude the rush. Still fighting, takes a big hit at the 41, ran right into Tanner Muse, who looks like that felt good for the safety. Well, they got home. They just not able to pick up the blitz, and then Isaiah Simmons forced the back, the quarterback back into Tanner Muse. But a big game by the quarterback there on third down and a long, long way. So it's fourth and eight. And 
rush for. There he has time, delivers a strike, and a catch made to Angeline for a fourth down conversion inside the 30. Well, really a well-designed play with crossing route that's going to take and take Venables right here, take him outside with this receiver, and then it just opens it up behind him. See, Venables looked that up, that underneath route gives him a nice passing lane. Real, very well-designed play and a good call there on fourth down. Venables had a big game to coach his son against Wofford. Had a, had a few tackles for loss. First down, it's Knights. And he'll fight for about two yards to the 25. You know, and you imagine growing up with Brent Venables as your dad, how intense that would be in third grade. Oh, in boy. Fourth, in fourth grade. <laughs> but... Man, he is fast and he is physical. He's gotten much bigger. He's up to 230 pounds. And you know with his dad as a defensive coordinator, one of the great minds of the game, with his son with at 6'1", 230, he's going to have a lot of instincts. Brent's probably got some sneaky old man moves, but I mean, Jake could throw him over the top rope. He's got a big he's, size edge yeah. on his dad. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> <There's> my man. <laughs> Leary taking a shot for the end zone. Diving attempt incomplete. The Wolfpack fans who are left here calling for a flag. They don't get one. Yeah, defensive coordinators typically, not all of them, but a lot of them are, are some of the more animated characters you're going to see in the college game. And Brent Venables, we always have the get back coach because he gets fired up. You know, they got people pulling him back. There he is. Right there at the hat and the orange golf shirt right behind him. He's ready just in case he gets too excited. But, man, it, he just doesn't stop. That's a, that's a real job, by the way. That is his assignment. That is. <laughs> He's one of the strength coaches, right? Yeah. He's got to keep his eye. Oh. He's always got, he's got to have his head on the swivel at all times. Third down. And Knight. Still fighting, shows great effort, and NC State getting closer to the goal line and trying to make this final score look more respectable. You know, the, the linemen are, are doing a better job of finally being freed up to be able to get up, get some hats on these linebackers, and it's given the back there, their night this time, a little bit more running room. Not that many of them, but there's some hardcore students down there making up about four rows in the are there field. i thought that was family no, right right down here in the oh, right right side yeah. there's like 17 the of student them. Will pack i see him maybe a couple more than that first and goal leary makes a long throw too wide for for right. long it was right to the student section area you're talking about the freshman sheridan jones in coverage the band is still here strong say that wow they are that's part of the job you cannot leave early to begin your festivities no, I think you're in the band they'll, they'll probably have a, a fifth quarter show on the field after the game I would guess well we can stay and do that too what else do we have Billy other Bennell, options Billy Bennell would like that hey they're still here I'll, I'll, I'll get that most of the crowd left at, at halftime they're still here those students night Fighting gang tackled by Venables and others. It'll be third and goal. Listen, we, we talked about what lies ahead for NC State. You just need to get to six wins. So they, they have two wins to come up with out of their last three games. Louisville next Saturday night, ACC Network game at Georgia Tech on a Thursday. And then they have the Tar Heels, that rivalry here at home. So they're going to have to find I'll two wins in those three, get to six and six and be both eligible. With the spirit that Dave Doran's been able to keep within his team, despite a lot of adversity through injuries and youth, uh, yeah, they're going to battle in those three games. Underneath, Leary finds the crossing right there in Venables with another tackle there. And, and, insane. What, what you love to see from Venables as a young linebacker is he's physical enough to come up and run support, and, and he's just coming downhill and, and popping the backs and also taking on linemen. Then he's athletic enough to kind of get his head on a swivel, feel the receiver coming across, and be able to make plays like that. So a lot of athletic ability, and yet the physicality is there as well. For this fourth and goal play, timeout taken.
Well, the college football standings, as far as the rankings, as far as I'm concerned, after today's raw results, I think LSU should move up to one uh, after their wins. They've beaten Auburn, Florida, on the road at Texas, today on the road in Tuscaloosa, Ohio State two, Clemson three. I think Georgia could move into four. And Alabama, even though they lost, they were at three. I think if you keep, you look, where do you put them? Five, six, seven? It's hard to drop them. So I, I will have them at five, and I think Oklahoma, I have at six. Come back to that. This is a fourth and goal play, but it's thrown way, way too high, and they come up empty. So we'll circle back. We'll have an opportunity, final five and a half minutes, to talk about the rankings, what the committee might do. Dave Doran said his team would fight, and they have battled. It's just too many mistakes at three fumbles, making things easier for comes into the first half. So we'll take a break. Come back. So one week after losing at home to Georgia Southern, they go on the road and beat an SEC team. And just if you thought this tonight couldn't get any more pleasant for Clemson fans, they watch the Gamecocks, their arch rivals, lose at home to App State. So getting back to how you would rank them and how you think the committee will rank them. Do you think it'll be a difference between the two? Um, I got LSU. I'm Ohio just interested State, Clemson, to see Georgia. how far Bama is going to drop for the committee. Um, you know, I, th from from three, do you, do you just drop them to four and keep them ahead of Georgia? Or do you drop them to five? Do you a drop them further down? A lot of people really like to look at the loss. And obviously Alabama's loss is much better than Georgia's loss, which looks even worse tonight with yeah. South Carolina losing. But Georgia's wins yeah. are better two, than Well, they have two wins against top 15 teams. As I said, I, I, I moved LSU up to one. I've had Ohio State there all year because of the consistency and the balance they've played on offense and defense. Been the most efficient team in the country. You just can't deny what LSU has done with that resume and the way that offense performs every single week. And against the opponents, they've done that against. By the way, Georgia has a serious challenge going to Auburn in a renewal of that, that yeah. very old rivalry and may have some players who suffered injuries today not available. I have to keep an eye on Georgia's injury report this week. Yeah, Bear said that they had Lawrence Cager who had a, a, a such a big role in their win over Florida as a wide receiver and then a couple offensive linemen that got banged up. We have no idea until you know, maybe middle of the week whether or not they'll be available. But um, yeah, that, that's a, a significant loss, even if those guys just slow down a bit. Second and 12, it's a screen into traffic, and Sweeney be rustled down right near the line of scrimmage. So the unbeatens coming into today, the, some of the, the major unbeatens. And of course, you can knock off number three, Minnesota taking care of that, and number four as well. And I think it's interesting. Yes, the 17 is next to Minnesota, but the win today at Penn State, by the way, they've looked good in a lot of oh, games. Man. You can say their opponents, they've know, looked like that, a great football team. They have two tough ones coming up here. Why not rethink after that well, win and move them yeah, way up? Clemson fans that are listening, that you know, they, they feel slighted. They've achieved so much in the last eight years. But when you see a new brand like Minnesota, that's the reason they're down at 17. But a win over Penn State, a top four team, in the way they looked playing in that game, I think, uh, I think they'll shoot up in the rankings. I think they'll get into the top 10 from 17. Bryce goes scrambling. He has hit as he goes out of bounds. Let's see if that draws a flag. There was a flag earlier in the play, kind of in the holding zone. Let's see a flag on the far side. I think he was in bounds when he got hit. Drake Thomas was chasing him there. He's actually down on the field. Peyton Wilson, one of the first time starters at linebacker. He left for the shoulder holding. injury. Offense number 65. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Calvin Hart was hurt earlier. He's back, and now Thomas is on the field. Take a break. Thomas, who's played really hard tonight, able to walk off. Ford wrap up show after the game. Highlights from that Bama LSU game, the frantic finish. Baylor staying unbeaten, Minnesota knocking off Penn State, and much more tonight. Coming up in three minutes. Defensive featured three first time starters at linebacker tonight. Backups all over the place. Uh, they'll have a life experience. They did battle, took on a team that's as loaded with talent as just about anybody in the country. Figured to be a mismatch, but. 
Durham promised his team would fight, and, and they have. And comes in his throttle back a little bit after a 28-point first quarter. Just seven points after halftime for the Tigers. Hines is back. ECC has been the Power Five conference that has the highest percentage of its games decided by one score. This one didn't figure to be among them, but say what you want about this. This conference's strength beyond Clemson. The games are typically very close. About, about half the games decided by a touchdown or less. That's pretty, pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. Big Ten is the least competitive conference in terms of percentage of close games. Under 30% have been one-score games, but that trend was reversed a bit today with some close wins by Illinois and Minnesota. Yeah, I, I think, you know, you get down to second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh place teams in the ACC or seventh ranked. I think there's a lot of parity there. That's why you Set get this close call. Set the game to three minutes. Three minutes. Clemson and Wake were the only two ranked teams. If Wake figures to obviously drop out of the rankings, I wonder if they'll just be one. Yeah, it's true. Next, year, next week's rankings. Yeah. So this new official, is he, is he done games before? This guy that's uh, come in? He's been the center judge. He just got promoted. Has he ever wore that white hat before? Because he's really taking his time here. Three minutes to go. It's Larry Saunders. He's earned Kirk's wrath here. Well, he's added Final 20 minutes. seconds. He's added 20 seconds to the clock. <laughs> We're looking to take, take, that, take that time down. My man wants to just stay here. You know, we just count the play clock down. Three, two, one. Oh, Dabo's killing us now. He's going to the play clock down before he takes a timeout. Well, here, here's the here's the game that really in late September was the one scares in this part of the country over on Chapel Hill. Mac Brown says we are going for the two and the win. They try an option to the boundary here, and the Tigers stretch it out and snuff it out and hold on to win. So overblown. This game and the fact that it was close. They didn't have they, they didn't play their best game and they still found a way to win the game on the road. Uh, let me just say that there's their schedule. Let me just say this. How many times have we seen a team win a national championship when you go back and you look at a game or two where they had a game like that? Clemson in their championship years. You know, think about when Pitt beat them or yeah. NC State missed the last second field goal or Syracuse beat them. I mean, you don't you don't always play your at your best every week. It doesn't mean that you should be penalized the way I think Clemson has been penalized for that North Carolina game. Well, I mean, they, they twice made the championship game with losses. Of course, last year they were perfect, but the standard was so high. That's I mean, right. They, they beat Alabama by four that's, touchdowns. That's what I told Dabo when we talked yeah. to him. I said, people, people evaluate you based on the way you look that night against Alabama, the way Trevor Lawrence looked against Alabama. That's people expect that from you every week. And if you don't live up to it, it's almost like they're, they criticize you. Well, I don't know what that, that's about. That's going to be a fourth fourth turnover. Tabari Hines waited for the last minute and tried to grab the ball. And Jack Maddox has recovered it. A fourth fumble for the Wolfpack. I mean, just get away from the ball. He thought, at the last second, I'm going to dive on it. You, you're not going to advance it. That, that is incredibly mindless. I mean, you gain nothing by diving on the ball. Except <clears throat> knock it to the other team. Wow. Three fumbles all year coming in for tonight. Bryce zips the throw high and off the hands. Mentioned that that championship game. Trevor Lawrence just outplaying two. They get the pick six by Terrell very early in the game. ETN on a shovel pass, and they kept pouring it on and on. And we've never seen the Saban team get beat I, I, like this. And not only that, they shut it down. They, 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 they shut down their competitive spirit. Clemson just tore them up that night, and Alabama was looking to get to the bus in about the third, late in the third quarter. That's so what 15 and 0, the first team in the history yeah. of the sport to do that. Yeah, and I think again that bar was so high that night that 
when they don't reach that bar, people are critical. And I'm not saying that's fair. I'm just saying that that's what I think happens to him. Overton catches the screen. I, I thought it was great to hear Dabo say this week, at this time last year, we were maybe one of the greatest teams of all time at 15 and 0. We're better this year. We're better at quarterback. We're better at running back. We're better at receiver. We're better at offensive line. Our defense statistically is better than we were last year. Different kind of leadership. More leaders on defense than we had last year. I mean, he's emphatic about the 2019 team and what they're capable of doing. You say you're better than 15 and 0. It is saying something. They're, they're going to be tough to beat. And the handoff here, Michael Dukes gets a ref, and he's knocked down inside the 15. I mean, would you agree? I mean, yeah. Hands full trying to deal yeah, with this. Yeah. Don't you almost feel like, and I, I love how Clemson shows up. They find a way to get a chip on their shoulder as defending champs. Right now they're using the rankings. But I just feel like they're one of those teams that everybody's just kind of put on the back burner because their league is down this year. Man, we can't wait to see Clemson in the playoff. You know, and, and Dabo, as much as he says they don't get rat poison, that's rat poison to him. Like, he doesn't want to even think about that. They just want to play NC State and play these games. But I think everybody's anxious to see Clemson when they get into the postseason. Bryce scrambles and knocked down inside the five. Well, now they're not going to be ranked outside the top four, clearly. Yeah. Wake Forest has lost, so they've already won the division title. They're talking about Charlotte. Now the challenge will be don't stumble because Dabo does believe that there is no margin for error for this team. That he believes that one loss yeah. in the committee will exclude them. Yeah, and I think that's a good message to send to his players. And I think with Skowski and Isaiah Simmons and Kayvon Wallace, they have such great leaders on this team. They're going to find a reason to get fired up every single game that they have left to play. Dukes hammers down near the goal line. And the guy is a freshman from Charleston. And to find the end zone here as a fourth stringer in the final minute. Comes in. Could run one more play here. Try to get over the half a hundred mark. I think that's clearly a goal. Timeout. And a timeout NC taken State. by the Wolf Their Pack. first charge timeout. Just to draw things out a little bit more for us. Of course, they lost that 15 championship game to Alabama. 45-40. Got the win on the final play. The breakthrough. 17. It was a semifinal game they lost to Alabama in the Superdome. And then, of course, the, the beatdown we just talked about. So two of the last three championships. And some serious swag has been earned by this program. I asked Lawrence, he said, other people envision championships and what wins feel like. Do you ever sit around and wonder what a loss would feel like? Because he hasn't had one since pretty early in his high school yeah. career. That's the last loss as a starter. He said, I, I, it occurs to me, I don't dwell on it, but he has tasted no defeat since then. Bryce rolls out, he retreats, flips it up into the end zone. He tried to get the ball to the coach's son too high for Wilt, and it's third and goal. Will's not going to win many jump balls. He's a terrific holder. Well, he's got great quickness, it's good hands. Yeah, and, he, and he's he, you know he's a guy that can do a lot of damage with rugs and crossers and, and things like that because he has low center of gravity. Built a lot like Amari Rogers. Get the hand up to Duke, who barrels into the end zone, and the Tigers do get over the half a hundred mark. Just there. Second touchdown after halftime. Dukes is pumped up. Doesn't get the chance to tote the rock very often. Should be, and the offensive line should be pumped up the way they got a really good push. Watch the offensive line. You get, you get chances to play, you want to take advantage of it. Watch the push, not just by the, by the back. Look at those linemen. Look at those linemen pushing people into the end zone. I love this about Clemson. And this has been going on here for years. When the backups come in, the starters, they're not just disengage hanging out on the sideline hanging out talking they're, they're out on the edge of their seat right on the right up on the sideline like take, take a look at this oh, Skowski. 
So the starting middle linebacker is going to take a turn at PAT. We've already had an offensive lineman the carry the ball for a touchdown. <laughs> They're fired up over there. And the kick is up and oh, no good. Missed. He hooked it. And he's just being Last ripped time. apart as that was his one chance. Last time you saw somebody kick an extra point. Hey, all right. Heading to the ACC championship. Last time you saw a guy kick with a neck, neck brace. <laughs> well, Clemson will, will, will dance tonight. They'll earn a couple trophies, the Atlantic Division. They'll maintain the Textile Bowl trophy. And uh, yeah, you can go to their Instagram and watch the dance party, which will be extra spirited tonight. Bunch of Clemson alums in this area. They now outnumber the home folks. Everybody in orange has moved down close to this field. They're kind of behind the Tigers sideline over there. The big favorites, big, big favorites in all the remaining games, including the ACC championship game, which will be most likely against the Virginia, Virginia Tech winner. But eight, what is it now? Eight of their 10 wins have been by 30 points or more this year. Yep. And everybody wants to hold and that one. And that was the other. That was a two touchdown win early in the season besides the Carolina game. Everybody's going to hold that you. one point win against North Carolina against them. Another reminder of it Tuesday night over on ESPN. Seven o'clock Eastern time is the spot for the exclusive reveal uh, just about the four you want to see oh, this, five six this could be a good seven. week just because of four five six seven eight nine where, where are these teams uh, remember oklahoma was nine last week tigers oh, he's running, oh he's running out yeah it's just kidding. by the way that, that is not that is not going to count he's putting his head down that is not good for no, him no. you got to get down there show him what's up <laughs> I don't blame him, but how many reps would that be? He's got to be a, about 150 push-ups, right? I mean, counting up every time. <laughs> well, he's averaging More. 44 a game, right? He's got to do 44 of those every game. He should be in shape. That's the final play. Clemson got more than enough in their first two possessions, which reached the end zone. 28 in the first quarter. Eight in a row in the series. And Doran's team will try to battle hard the next couple of weeks to get bowl eligible as the Tigers point toward the postseason. And they'll have an angry Wake Forest team up next in Death Valley. Dabo has made his way to Maria Taylor. All right, coach. Started with the orange britches and it ends with you guys going back to the ACC championship and you've been there every year since 2014. So what does it mean to clinch the first week of November? Well, it's, it's, it's really just special. I'm just so proud of our guys. This was an unbelievable night. Uh, things worked out to where we had a chance to clinch tonight and man, they were ready to play. They were focused and, uh, you know, to, to, to win it for the fifth time in a row. I mean, that's a, that's an amazing uh, accomplishment for these guys and and uh, just building on, you know, what's happened in the previous year. So we're excited about it. Uh, that's a that's our next goal is to win the division. Uh, so, but we got a we got a lot more goals too. So just proud of them. We're gonna enjoy this tonight and get back at it. Uh, we got a tough Wake Forest team next week. A team that hasn't lost in 677 days. We put up there. How does you how do you keep a chip on the shoulder? How do you keep your team pushing and not becoming complacent at all? Well, we just we just play Clemson every week, you know, and uh, you know we just try to. Uh, start over every Monday, and uh, we respect every opponent. And we respect the process of getting ready every week, and, and uh, you know we take pride in our performance. Any thoughts on where this team should be ranked? Oh no, man! Hey, we just we just hopefully we can you know keep playing well. We'll have a shot somewhere down there. We just we were fifth, <laughs> and so maybe we can move up in there. But you know, again, it just doesn't really matter right now. What matters is us, you know, taking care of the things that we control, and that's. That's uh, game day. All right, thanks, Coach. You got it. Thank you. It doesn't matter until it matters. You can use it for motivation. Little old Clemson. Little old Clemson on the Roy bus. 25 in a row. Yeah, just kind of making. Well, they they win one trophy tonight. They retain another, and obviously, as you 
a couple more trophies in mind for him. They got to keep playing with that edge, which he does such a great job of getting his team ready to do and play in that fashion. They'll continue to play that way. Bill Pernell produced the telecast. Derek mildly directed it. We thank our crew. We'll see you from Waco next Saturday night. Oklahoma and undefeated Baylor. 55-10 is the final rally time for the Ford wrap-up show to Cassidy Hubbard.